What's going on, boys and gals? 
It's uh, it's JG, and as I mentioned in the uh, precursor chat, just got a message from Christy Malzon. First one in like two months, and I would normally get more than that. Uh, you know, as you guys know, she had been feeling well, and she went home about a week ago, I think. Finally got a message uh, from Miss Christy. She says, "Thank you for the shout out and concern during my ICU craziness. Miss y'all." That's, that goes for y'all, too, because I told Gus twice that you, we'd been talking about her on the show and praying for her and that our whole community had really been uh, thinking of them. And uh, I'm telling you guys, this stuff works, for real. So I'm not going to get too deep on that one. But anyway, uh, fired the F up to hear that about Miss Christy, uh, that she's doing better. Because uh, I think it was touch and go there for a little while. She didn't tell me that, but that's just kind of the feeling that I got. Anyway, guys, uh, what's going on? It's great to be here again on this Saturday, a beautiful Saturday down here in uh, lower, I guess. Well, we're right on the border between lower Alabama and central Alabama. I don't know. Central Alabama to me is like Birmingham, and lower Alabama is Mobile, and we're stuck in the middle. But anyway, beautiful day out there. And the Auburn Tigers played some very, very good basketball today, did they not? Uh, kind of a bumpy first 10 minutes or so, but then kaboom, they figured out uh, how to beat that trapping concept that actually Texas A&M had two trapping concepts. They had like a 1-3-1 one, one full court pressure type situation, and Auburn really didn't have too much trouble with that, but they did have trouble in the half court. They were doing some trapping stuff, doubling the ball a lot, and the way that you beat that is you kind of increase your passing tempo and, in their case, uh, passing accuracy, and then you can just pretty easily get shots. And I think for the final, let's say, 28 minutes of that game, I think Auburn got plenty of shots. And Walker Kessler was the uh, biggest benefactor of all of this. Finished with another triple-double. That's a two this year. He had one against LSU. Uh, and I'm kind of shooting from the hip here because I don't have the numbers up yet. But uh, I think he had 16 points, 12 boards, and 11 blocks or something like that. Uh, let's go ahead and get over to our main page because I've got it up over there, yo. My eyes ain't what they used to be. The old gray Mary ain't what he used to be. 12 points, 11 boards, 12 blocks for Walker Kessler in 24 minutes. Good golly, Miss Molly. Uh, Andy was saying on the show that, um, that he's the, he one of five players in SEC history to have more than one triple-double in a season. And I know... Uh, Shaquille O'Neal from LSU was one of them, which is pretty good company. I think Roy Rogers from Alabama, who was a real mess uh, back in the mid-'90s, uh, was another one. And Nick Calathis, who played at Florida, is another one. Uh, so, yeah, huge day for Walker. I mean, and it did – you know what the funny – I wrote about this in the game, game rap. This wasn't his best game of the year by far. I don't even think this is the best game of the month. I mean, I thought he played great against Alabama – uh, was that a week, a week and a half ago? And I thought he played great against Arkansas, too. So, uh, to me, this is probably his third best performance out of his last five. And he still gets a triple-double out of it. The third in Auburn school history, right? And he has two of them. Pretty impressive. <clears throat> so, good news all around. SSIM008 in the chat. Easy work. Back to business. War damn eagle. We'll give it a laugh because, hey, I mean, the Aggies tried, right? They do not have what it takes to mess with Auburn, uh, really, on, on either end of the court. I mean, truth be told, uh, particularly when they're shooting this poorly from three-point range. Can't necessarily say that Auburn's uh, perimeter defense was, you know, incredible today. Um, I think A&M just had a really bad shooting night. But, hey, you give them credit, man. I mean, Auburn got them to shoot, what, 14? I got them as three of 22 from three. 14% for the Aggies. Not very good. And then 16 of 48 from two-point range, which is 33%. Auburn was 56% from two. So, I guess there was just something wrong with the buckets today, huh? Three of 25 from three, the Auburn Tigers were not very good. And they were three of 22. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens sometimes. Uh, Mr. M says, JG, tell me you saw the buzzer beater for Lamp last night. I did because you posted it on Facebook, and I saw that. That was awesome. Uh, fired up for the uh, the Golden Tigers. And uh, I think the girls are doing well, too, right? Uh, <laughs> Mama Do, you had me laughing my ass off there the other night. We talked about Dale from Boise. It's one of my favorite uh, memes going around the bunk right now. <laughs> uh, Blake R., our main man from uh, the Eastern Seaboard. We love him. He's a great bunk. He's a great brain drainer. Says Walker Kessler. Walker Kessler. Yes, he was huge today. And also, again, Comes on radio right away, and then he's like super chill and, oh, did I? Cool. Yeah, I dabble in that a little bit. Who knows? 
He's a, he's a very, very awesome star, isn't he? Riley M., I absolutely love your avatar, man. It is one of my all-time favorites. I, was, I saw it before the show started, and I was laughing my ass off. Uh, he's got a picture of Harson uh, with like some kind of a bright background, and he's got the, the sunglasses on, the uh, deal with it sunglasses. <laughs> oh, man, that makes me happy to see that. A. Robinson says, JG is about to announce he's the new offensive coordinator. We don't have an offensive coordinator hot board yet. We got it. We got a TPIR horn for that one. Oh, JG. What? You failed us, bro. Ravine in the house says, what's up, JG? Pretty nice day to have a cha 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 He messed around and got a triple-double. I'll tell you something right now. <sighs> Looks like everybody's pretty fired up for Chrissy. I'm glad to hear that. That's what I'm talking about right there. War Eagle 0008 says, great dub. Walker playing great. Jabari slumping a bit. But team able to pick it up. War Damn Eagle. Absolutely. So Walker played great, as we mentioned. Al was good today, right? 16 points led the team. Uh, shooting percentage was just so-so. Uh, and I think he kind of found, instead of rolling off screens and going downhill and losing his mind like he'd been doing, uh, he was pretty chill. He was kind of posting up along the uh, along the perimeter. And then at that point, either he was going to shoot an open three or he was going to drive off of that and either dish or finish. And it was a kind of a simple uh, attack for him on the attacking end, I should say. I don't necessarily think you'd attack on the defensive end, but you know what I mean. And um, I think it worked for him. And he was saying after the game, he just felt more comfortable out there. And you know, he's a good player, and he gets pooped on a lot on the bunker. And I understand the frustration because he hasn't been very good this year. But we know there's a lot there, right? We know what Al Flanagan can do when he's fully healthy and he's fully in gear. And he's neither one of those right now. I mean, he's he, he's he's fine. I mean, the, the the partially torn Achilles and the surgery and stuff. I think he's 100 percent from that. I just think he's lost a little bit of the explosiveness. And honestly, when you're talking about top level college basketball, a little bit of explosiveness explosiveness, excuse me, makes a big difference. It really does. Jirau in the house as well. He says, "Is that uh, Booby Whitlow and the thumbnail?" LOL. I think I changed it though. I think I got it changed. But in the beginning, it is until I change it. Yeah, you're right. You're right about that. Uh, <laughs> Auburn unit, what an absolute freaking unit. Says Zepp is the unsung hero of this team. Also, Flanny had the quietest 16 points I've ever seen. Getting better. Yes, Zepp was huge out there. I wrote about that in the uh, game wrap that I thought his defensive presence was important and uh, his on the ball just presence uh, on both ends, I guess, of the floor. Um, I think it's really important that he play point guard for this team. Uh, let's see, kind of a. He goes for two. He has two assists, one turnover, and they limited his minutes a little bit. Twenty-four minutes, it looks like, uh, just because he had missed two games due to an illness. But I thought it was big out there, and it and it kind of takes a lot of pressure off of Wen Green, who did not have a great game today. I mean, he just wasn't really a big part of what they were doing today. But um, yeah, having Zep out there is a, a total difference maker on the defensive end, and I think it's a big reason why Texas A&M had so much trouble today. Uh, Ravine says the Commodore wins best mod hair. My hair is not looking the best today because we uh, we were going for a walk. You know, the game started kind of early, as you guys know, and uh, we were going for a walk and didn't have a chance to get all that done. Uh, Mama Do That, one of our favorites, says we will always be fans of Gus and Christy. On a personal level, I certainly hope so. Uh, I mean, not, not I just I wish more people would adopt this attitude, Mama Do That. You have the right attitude. Honestly, so happy to hear. Yes, I, I think it was touch and go there for a minute. J Dub jumping in, my main man. Me and J-Dub were drinking some of the brown water last night uh, for a dual birthday party. That's a D-U-A-L birthday party for uh, our friends, Becky and Cuz. <clears throat> a married couple who have birthdays on consecutive days. Isn't that kind of weird? Like my wife and I, we our birthdays are way apart. I feel like that's the best way, but, uh, you know, they do, it, they do it their way. It's all good. Appreciate you, J-Dub. What an absolute legend. Cannot wait to throw down with you in the uh, tropical zone. You know, it's not that far off, bro. And if Pipe Player Nick's watching, it's, it's time, bud. It's time to get uh, put the saddle on that horse, and let's get going, buddy. <laughs> Stu Pup jumping in, keeping the streak alive. This guy's been un unbelievable for with us, for us, ever since we started. Good win, but Auburn got to shoot some more three-point shots. Yeah, he's talking about in the gym. Uh, three of 25, I mean, it wins the night because the defense is so good and Texas A&M to me is just kind of a middling team, but man, you, you get up some of these gnarly teams like Kentucky, uh, Arkansas on the right night, although Arkansas lost by one at Bama today. Um, 
Look at this. Uh, Spread Attack says my parents' birthday is on the same day, February 7th. Wow. I don't, I don't know how I'd feel about that. Well, at this point in our life, it wouldn't. It doesn't matter, right? I'm almost 50 now. I mean, it's not a big deal. We just basically hang out and drink bourbon on our birthdays anyway, so it wouldn't make a big difference. Uh, Stefan says, JG would have made a good cheerleader with that chant. <laughs> <laughs> not a chance, bro. <laughs> Although there would be some perks, right? There are some perks to being a cheerleader, maybe a male cheerleader, because you get to hang out with a lot of hotties, right? But I don't know. Uh, let's see. Convicted Harsonist. <laughs> Good name. Uh, they ran some sets to get Flanny pinned down on a smaller guard in the post slash elbow, and he was pretty effective turning and getting to the rim. Yeah. To me, like, and that's a good point, Convicted Harsonist. When he just does the full drive downhill, at least in the, you know since he came back from the injury, I just feel he gets out of control too much, and he doesn't have the same kind of slight wiggle that you need it. You know, when you're – when you're driving downhill, sometimes you got to veer this way or that way to avoid a, a charge or other defensive obstruction. And then what you're talking about and what I was talking about is it shortens the length of that drive. See, what you're talking about is you get the ball at the elbow, and it's like really two steps. It's a two-step drive versus a seven-step drive. And I think it just simplifies things for him, and, and he made, made the most of it today. So uh, great strategy. And a great execution from uh, Al just to be able to uh, throw aside some of his misgivings, I guess, about how things are going, about the season he's having, and uh, just doing what he got to do. Good stuff. Ravine says, ask yourself, have I hit the like button? <laughs> I like it. We love likes. Uh, look at this. CDF, a.k.a. the Duff Diver, who was in attendance for the midweek game at Arkansas. Uh, one of the uh, few people in orange there says, good dub, Walker is gone, folks. Um, I'm still not sure about that, if you want my opinion. He's having a great season, don't get me wrong. He's an absolute beast, and I think he's going to be the defensive player of the year. If he gets one more triple-double, you know, and continues to play at more or less this level, he'll be the national player of the year. Um, I still don't know how well... His game translates to the NBA. I mean, he's going to play, obviously, but, I mean, it's such a crazy shooting league, and I do think he has some shooting ability. But I just don't know, man. I just don't know. I just don't know. Hornacious is here as well. We love Hornacious. Hornacious is, you know, he's one of those guys that looks like Popeye, and uh, he just acts all weird and stuff, and he's actually a really, really good dude. Uh, I do give him hell every time we post a new uh, rundown about him having to get his wife's permission to drive a freaking cheap. And uh, he said the other day that he's got another one now. So I don't know if that's better or worse. I don't know if he had to ask permission. We haven't gotten that far with him yet. Uh, I hope to. I'm really hoping to kind of run uh, into his wife before too long, you know, at least, you know, maybe them together and just kind of get this thing sorted out. I think I'd like to meet her. She seems like a, the kind of chick that I would like to talk to a little bit. I don't mean that way. I just mean someone to know. Because I got no use for soft, Beta women, I, I don't. I'm married to a, an alpha girl, and I hang out with alpha women when I do, and uh, I like girls like that. Uh, J-Dub says, where are you at, pipe player Nick? <laughs> where are you at? He might be reeling, uh, J-Dub, because Purdue got their butt beat the other day. Might be uh, upsetting to some. Corey Dub, one of our all-time favorites here in the Montgomery area and just a general badass who I know for a fact listens to REO Speedwagon. Uh, you could take that for what it is. Uh, it is. It's too early to start. Is it too early to start sipping on some bourbon? Who am I kidding? Never too early. Uh, I'll tell you what, Corey. <laughs> Since you brought it up, uh, I'll drink some of this Wathens. Uh, this is a uh, yeah. This is a one you don't see all that often. It's kind of a low price, uh, low proof. 94 proof. It, eats, it drinks pretty easily. Uh, Leif, the legend. Leif, the legend. You can't say Leif without an L because he's a legend. Uh, sent me to this during the quarantine, and I've been sipping on it because I know I can't ever get any more. I mean, it's it's not available near me. So let's go ahead and bottoms up, Big Daddy. And we're going to drink this one, Corey, to uh, – well, we'll, we'll always drink it to Tori. But we'll also drink it to everybody who loves REO Speedwagon. And let's see, Blake says Corey takes it on the run. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, don't what? Keep on loving you, obviously. Uh, why am I blanking on Ario Speedwagon songs? Come on, man. One lonely night. Uh, 
Don't Let Him Go, and that another one? Something like that. To you, Arya. Mm. Oh, yeah, that feels good, yo. Shane says, I looked at the final box score and was amazed Al had 16 points. He looked lost at times out there. Well, now, buddy, we're, we're looking for incremental progress here, you know? I think he's just kind of... Um, Again, I think he's lost like five. Let's, I'm just making up a number here. Five or seven percent of his explosiveness. He'll get it back. It's, it was just from being stuck and not being able to really do much with his leg for two months. Can't fight this feeling. Great stuff, Mama Do That. Another Speedwagon classic. How did I not remember that? It's like a number one song. Frank says, JGT, I feel like your basketball breakdowns are underrated. Thank you, sir. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, I, my, today's wasn't as long maybe as some of the other ones uh, that I've done before, but, you know, you got you got to the, the heart of the matter, really, which is that Walker was unstoppable. Al really stepped up. Zepp was really big defensively. And I talked about the uh, def- defensive, I'm sorry, the passing adjustment they had to make to beat the A&M defense, which I thought was a tempo issue with passing. Got to get the passes out moving more quickly. You got to get the directions. You got to get uh, to your spot to get a pass a little more quickly. And you can pass around the pressure. You can do it. And they did it. I mean, they showed. They proved it. They got it going. Uh, fat Crack in the house as well. Uh, my main man who loves uh, landing in uh, on the island or in Caldera. He's fine either way. JGT, it seems as though we have struggled on offense lately. Are you happy with our shooting percentages, and how can we get better if not? That's a good point. Um, no, I don't. They ha- their shooting has not been terrific lately. That is definitely, uh, I think, our far to say. Uh, I need to look up some of these numbers. So today, uh, they shoot fifty six percent from two, which is fine. Twelve uh, percent from three, <laughs> just a little low, <laughs> and sixty four percent from the free throw line, which is a little low. Uh, let me look at this Arkansas game uh, from the other night. Auburn shoots 45% from two, which to me they should always be above 50 at from two. Uh, 25 from three, not good enough. And 47, of course, blech, from the free throw line. That was dog shit. Uh, Bama game, 50% from two, 23% from three, 78% from the line. So a three-point percentage has been bad lately, hasn't it? But that's not really their calling card, is it? Uh, let's see. I said Bama, didn't I? Wrong one. Okay, Bama game. This is the one at Auburn Arena. 60% from two, 23% from three, 80% from the free throw line. So, yeah, everything's been fine except for the three-point shooting has been kind of bad lately. Oklahoma game, 58% from two. Good with that. 26 from three, and then 85% from free throw line. Yeah, yeah. Boy, I didn't realize it had been going this long. You just kind of think they're getting a little bit of a funk, but, man, this is like a seven-game funk. Uh, Missouri game, 42% from two. Yeah, they haven't hit 30% from three in a minute. I'm not going to go through all these games because it's not great. Uh, it's not great video because you guys can't see shiz, but, uh, yeah, you're right. They need to work on that. I mean, you think about it, Jabari's their best three-point shooter, which in a way is cool, right, because he's 6'10". It's kind of not cool, too, because they got a lot of guards. And those guys should be better three-point shooters. Uh, Auburn has several guys that are right in that 30 range, but they need more guys in the 40 range. And somebody posted on the bunker and said, hey, man, if they had one Bryce Brown shooter right now, this team would be unstoppable. And I have to agree. I think that's the one thing they're missing right now. Because they sure do have a lot of other stuff, don't they? Bob wants to go into football already. How dare you? I don't know how we feel about this, guys. He says, I think the boosters might have learned something from this latest embarrassment. Oh, you know, he's asking me. I'm sorry. Do you think? He didn't put do. Think the boosters might have learned something from this latest embarrassment for them. Wow, that's a complicated answer there, brother. Um, Let me get into that in a minute. I got I got to ponder that for a minute. Uh, Hornacious says he was told to go buy another tree. <laughs> so, once again, he's doing as he's told. <laughs> I mean, we all do it. We just don't necessarily admit it publicly. Or even trumpet it on Facebooks, as some people do. Uh, Sam H. jumps in. Someone who does not do that, I would imagine, although I don't know that for sure. says, what does Bruce do to get all these guards out of their shooting slump? Great, prescient thing to talk about, Sam. Our three-point percentage has been has been hit, but a lot of miss this season. Yeah, man, it is bad. I didn't realize it had gotten that bad. Um, Auburn currently is... 
Ah, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize it had fallen off that bad. They're at 31% for the season, which is 292nd in the country. They now officially get a red box on uh, Ken Palm there. Ah, yeah, yeah. I didn't remember it being that bad. I don't sit around looking at these stats, you know, day to day. I just kind of, you know, I know what they look like. I'm going to go ahead and get the snapshot put up here. And uh, we'll just talk about this. Bump, bump. Just switched over to the new operating system. If you guys are Mac people, uh, the new one is Monterey. I know this this was announced in October, was released in early November, and I just added it because I'm always scared and my shit not working. Um, where did my you little turd? I'm really mad about that. Yeah, I did the little screen pull and it didn't work. Yeah, well now it will. There we go. Now I can see it. All right, here's the Ken Palm data as of uh, today. And you can see right there under miscellaneous components, three-point percentage for Auburn, 31.3, which is 292nd in the country. Ay, ay, ay. <sighs> Dang. Yeah, so that's definitely the one that sticks out the most. See, the only thing they're getting on red boxes are um, that matter. Field goal uh, attempts, I'm sorry, free throw attempts per field goal attempt attempts is a red box on the defensive side which means they they foul too many too often i guess on drives too many drives end up in a foul defensively uh free throw percent defense <laughs> i guess you could wave your hands better or use better insults i've always kind of found that concept funny and the non-steal turnover percentage which to me is kind of a vague i don't even really know what to say about that one so, yeah, they got to find a way to get a little bit more three-point shooting out of this team, right? I mean, you can't – I don't know as though you can go to the title. Eh, maybe you can. You can if Jabari's going off, which he doesn't really do as much, right? Like, I keep expecting Jabari to be like, you know, blow up and be a 25-point-a-night guy. And it, it just certainly didn't happen today, and we don't see it very often. He's really good at everything, but he never really takes games over. I don't know if this is a concern or not. I, I, I am tempted to not flake out over that one. Yeah, he's just so good and, and so calm. Blake says, time for me to fly. I, I suppose it's time for me to fly. That's another good one. I got Speedwagon has so many good songs, huh? But you guys weren't even thinking. Hugh Freeze guy says, sorry I'm late, Jay. Time to change the name. Been a good run. I thought you were one of our friends from Ole Miss site. <laughs> Why don't you be um why don't you be Eric Keystyle guy? Thought about that? Why don't you ask yourself that? Maybe you'd be good at that. Uh let's see. Mama Dudat says Ario sing song most applicable to AU right now is Roll with the Changes. Uh I'll give you a I'll give you an applause on that. That's pretty clever. You're about right. Let's see, uh, WODE says late night Wednesday tip versus Vandy. Are we number one or are we number one? <laughs> I do think that Auburn's going to slide a little bit for the loss at Arkansas, particularly with Arkansas losing to Alabama today, at Alabama for what it's worth. Um, it shouldn't fall far. I, I, you know, there's not many teams still that have two losses. Uh, most folks have more than that. Um, I would imagine Gonzaga will probably reassert itself in the number one spot if they beat St. Mary's tonight. St. Mary's is a good team, but the game is in Spokane. And I think the Ken Palm's giving uh, Gonzaga like a 96% chance to win that game. I, they know Gonzaga better than I do. Uh, at this point, to me, you're looking at Auburn, Arizona, Gonzaga are, are the big teams. Um, Houston. Is a team kind of lurking in the weeds a little bit. Duke has been getting a little bit better, although they had a, a nasty home loss the other day. Shit like that happens when you're in ACC, though. I mean, people just pop up. And, uh, you know, you guys know how I feel about the Purdue Boilermakers, but they lost to Michigan the other night. They didn't just lose. They got crushed. Um, and they got Maryland tomorrow. So we'll just keep an eye on that. My guess is that Auburn falls to three, and they put Gonzaga and Arizona ahead of them. Is my guess. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it's the guess. Arizona, man, is a real problem. I was looking at this team early today. I, I watched them just some against UCLA, and I was like, oh, they're pretty damn good. They're top four players at Arizona. Three of them are at least 6'11". <laughs> oh, shit. 
So you, we, you watch Auburn play so much, and Walker is such a pain in the ass because he's tall and he's limber and he's just a problem, you know. And Jabari is kind of that way. I mean, he's tall, obviously. Defensively, he's not quite where Walker is. But, bro, if you go up against Arizona, <laughs> they've got three guys like Walker. You'd be like, well, buddy, what are we going to do now? So, yeah, don't have to worry about Arizona for a while, though. It's just tuck that one in the back of your head. If I had an issue with Arizona, it would be the fact that they're coached by a first-year coach. Well, second-year coach now, I should say. He came over from – no, he might be a first-year coach, actually. This is his first year. Came over after, like, 20 years as a Gonzaga assistant. Anyway, sorry, guys. I was getting a little bit off track. I know we love talking about basketball, and there's other stuff going on here. Actually, uh, Real Deal ragged on me for talking about football earlier. <laughs> Look at that. We got John Starnes in the chat. Holy shit. It says, I agree, real deal. Football talk is depressing. <laughs> Dude, would you have thought we would have said that 20 years ago, though, Starnes? Be honest with me. Uh, Sam H. jumps in again. What an absolute legend this guy is. Justin Powell is four, four. Why are you bringing up Justin Powell? He's 44% from three point this season. He would definitely fit well with this team as a spot up shooter. Probably would replace Devin. Right, I'm starting to kind of get. I'm starting to get a little bit of a feel for Devin now. Now that he's not so, uh, the word I would use is overexposed. He's kind of got his niche now, and I love him in that niche. He's the he's the he's the bouncy, spazzy guy off the bench. No, not Dylan. Uh, <laughs> he's the actual like get to the rim guy. Not Dylan. Uh, I love the way he's been playing lately. So I don't know if I want to trade that at this point. Plus, JP's long gone, man. He checked out and long gone, bro. I hate it because I really like that kid. He grew up like literally half a mile from where my wife grew up. He lived like three parcels over from where she lived and stuff. I mean, I, I was like, this kid is from Prospect, Kentucky. It's my guy right there. And then he had to leave. Crazy. Canoe Man says, we got dudes. Hey, now. Uh, of course, trumpeting uh, a statement that AU Storm 20 made on our show uh, not too long ago. It was probably a month ago, and everybody was in agreement that that is indeed the case. Actually, it might have been late, uh, further back than that. It might have been during the end of football season. Sorry to even say the F word at this point, fellas and gals. Uh, so Eric E. says this defense is the best in the nation when it has all the pieces. And, uh, dude, I just turned on Skype. We got a call coming in from an unknown caller. Who could it be? Hey now, welcome to the brain drain. Who this? Hey, JG, it's Figgy Poop. Hey, what up, Figgy? How we doing? Well, I mean, wonderful, and I, I don't even want to answer you. I just want to give you the, uh, the, the the recruiting finger, you know? Yeah, hey, I'm pointing at you right now. You can't see it. <laughs> How you been, bro? We're good. We're good. It was a, uh, a good morning. Got up, fixed brunch for everybody, and, and, and then watched Bruce and the boys. Yeah, and they uh, they did things. Uh, they 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 put those fun. they put the Aggies away. You know, I don't, I don't know anything about basketball, but uh, you know we can have some bad shooting days, but we play really good defense, and so you know then we can still blow folks out. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? There's probably another one coming Wednesday night, so that would be nice. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, are you uh, are you at the beach and like taking a break after the last you know month or so? No, I got told on the bunker today that I did a shitty job and I got my ass beat by Cole Kubelik. So I better, I gotta, I gotta get better. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I, I mean that you know, those things are always fun because there's information flying everywhere and most of it's not real. And so, you know, you do the best you can. Like I don't envy that spot for anybody that's trying to get truth out of it. Just got another note, a uh, message from Christy. Uh, well, well, I'll talk about this when I get you off the air because when I've got you on the air, I want to I want to hit you up for everything I can hit you up for. Uh, we've been okay. uh, the people in the chat want to talk about basketball, but I'm dying to ask you some stuff about football, Figgy Poo. So, do you mind? Sure. Yeah. No. Go ahead. I mean, how big in the, in the grand scheme of things, how big of a fuck up do you think this whole thing was? Look, I, I'm look. I think it was a big kerfuffle, but but I also don't think that that like there was as many bad actors as the bunker does like i think that this was there was a sort of an official investigation probably launched by auburn um you know into you know for a variety of reasons it could have been the davis situation it could have been uh the mason thing it could have been players leaving we don't really know but 
then the the investigation included talking to people, and so as soon as people started, you know, the players started getting inquiries, then they take to Twitter and Insta Space and all that kind of stuff, and it creates just this like just this frothy environment of conjecture, speculation, whatever. And I think there was probably a legit investigation that was probably handled as well as it could be handled. Well, that's a that's a plus for Auburn University then, for sure. I, I actually, like, I, I generally think that Auburn orchestrates the clown show, but I, I actually think that this was more of, like, an organic sort of, you know, frothy, there was an investigation, you got a, a head coach that's struggling, you had a recruiting, you know, finish with a fizzle, and you had just this really ripe environment, and then you have complete staff turnover, and then an investigation starts, and it just – gets frothy but i i think that was sort of an organic type thing and not necessarily the fabled power that be oh very good okay well that's that's one what's one way to look at it i've known um, you to be so, right more than you've yeah, been wrong i don't know man i i'm I, like i'm totally speculating there i don't know so but that's just that's my read on it word all right well he's gonna be so, here and i wonder if he's you know he's got a piano on his back now i mean let's be real about it well, I've said it like I like I'm Team Harson. I got a lot of questions, and it's very easy to like fix this, and you go win games. Like, I think he's got to do some PR stuff. He's got to do some stuff better to be the coach at Auburn that he's not used to. But if he goes and wins, you know, it, it, a lot of that stuff takes care of it. That's true. Cliff Ellis used to say, "Just win, baby," and that was the solution. To everything. Just, I mean, Boise uh, on the bunker, I mean, what's he say? Like, it doesn't matter, just win. Yeah. Or don't care, just win. I mean, it's true. Like, you know, we'll all align. We're big, huge homers. We will all align, just win. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they still got to recruit, though, man, and they haven't done much of that. So, yeah. They... I mean, you know, but, like, that's part of the winning thing, right? If you can do it a different way, then just do it a different way. Fine, now. I don't know if you can do it a different way. That's where I've got my doubts, but, you know, whatever. All right. That's good stuff, Figgy so, Poo. I, w- I love you, and I love your takes on football in particular. You always have a really well, good insight on, on, on the back door, staying in the back room stuff. Yeah, that's right. Well, hey, did uh, did you hear Billis echoing me today? Or mm-hmm. whoever the guy was, I can't – like, he was, he was talking about how there's no real uh, uh, accountability on the, uh, on the uh, official side. And he was talking about, um, you know, uh, that the, uh, I don't know what he was saying, maybe the the organizers, the official, the officials, bosses or whatever, like they get fired for the inconsistency that is the referees. Uh, You mean specifically SEC basketball referees? He, yeah, he was talking. Well, he was talking more, you know, nationally. National, but, okay. Um, he was talking. He was talking about it in the game. Well, what so. I mean, what, what what's what's a possible way to handle that? I mean, how could you hold them accountable? Is this like in a public way, or? or? I mean, in this, uh, here's my thing. I I don't think that that official like there's plenty of money in the in Power Five to have employees that are officials that are full time employees. And, and it can be a well-paying job that, that people want. And, uh, and, and so then in that manner, like that, that would create accountability because uh, you have a boss to answer to. Now, I have no idea how the official hierarchy of the officials works, but that's not their real job. That's their weekend job. And, and so with that comes, you know, other stuff and, and uh, you know, there's not full accountability to it. They can lose their job, I guess. As a as an official in the you know football really uh, I don't know about how basketball really works but um, you know they ought to be official either employees of the NCAA or or like full time employees of the conference for which there's reviews and HR and all that stuff that goes along with with a full time job yeah I wonder how you would even not me and you but like somebody who really knows basketball officiating who like let's say he's a great knower of officiating shit like how does he assess how well a guy is doing versus a third guy in, a, in his crew or you know somebody that's doing alabama state games versus somebody that's doing the duke north carolina game i don't know how you figure that I, out but there's got to be a way right I, i'm yeah I, i'm sure there is and i i would imagine like the speed of the game sort of like a player right i mean i bet there's 
there's ones that can really follow and flow. And, and then once it gets too fast, they just sort of, the game loses them. Um, and, and so I, I, but I guarantee you, like, I, I guarantee you, um, Bruce knows who the good refs are and who the bad refs are when they walk in the building. Yeah, it just knows about reputation. But I would imagine he likes them because of how well he can interface with a particular dude or not, you know, because some of them are dicks and some of them are cool. And I wonder if that's part and, of and it. And I would imagine they call, I, I would imagine they, they, you know, they call a game a certain way. And I would imagine there's some of them that call, get totally caught up in the emotion of the games. And then there's some of them that are, you know, have that harsh and steely glare that this pressure doesn't matter. Um, and I, you know, I have no idea. Um, yeah, okay. But I, I would imagine they do have those types of, of sort of, you know, things that go along because those are just sort of human characteristics that yeah. we all have. Figgy Poo. there's a talent thing that goes with it. So, you anyway. bring up some good points, man, as always. Hey, hey, it's fun, dude. Love what you're doing. It's a, you know, big, huge family. We don't always get along. We don't always agree, but it's always fun. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic environment that you cultivate. Appreciate you, Figgy Poo, for saying that and for being part of that environment. All right. We love it, Bubba. All right. See y'all you, take care. Bye. There he is, Figgy Poo, calling us uh, from the road because he's always out getting something done. Uh, I did have a couple super chats. I need to miss one. Mobile alum, of course, jumped in here. You, you've seen that here on the front for a minute. Auburn alumni, hold on, bro. i got to get through this. Uh, she says, hey, hey, JG, looking forward to seeing you next Saturday. Bunker's going to bunk. Uh, she is referring correctly. Uh, to the shindig we're going to have at Voodoo Wing Company in Mobile next Friday. So now the Flor- this is the day of the Florida game. The game's going to be at 1. Um, I'm probably going to be able to write that up because I'm going to be in Mobile already. But we're not going to do a, uh, a brain drain from that. We're going to do a taped rundown uh, with Jay Head and others. We may be able to uh, sway Mobile alum to be on the show at least for a moment. Uh, and we're just going to hang out at Voodoo Mobile and chill. If you guys would like to come hang out with us, you're absolutely welcome to be there. Uh, we would love more the merrier. Uh, I'm going to be drinking some brown water. I'm going to be doing some chatting and hanging out and doing my thing. And we're staying the night, Friday and Saturday night. So I'm, I'm there for the duration, and we will absolutely throw down. So be there, be square, or or oblong, or whatever you want to be. <sighs> Looking forward to that. Also, uh, I feel like I missed one other super chat I did. From my man, Quan, another one of our Montgomery legends. Uh, so shout out to the powers that be in their 0-1 mentality. <laughs> He's calling them out. Um, yeah, that's a that's a complicated answer there. Um, we'll get into that. We'll definitely get into that. That's good stuff. Thanks, Quan. Did I say Friday? I meant Saturday, Mobile alum. I am going to be there Friday and Saturday, but no, the the event is going to be on Saturday. The nineteenth, uh, February nineteenth, the game, the day that Auburn plays at Florida. So I will be there. Uh, Bob Williams says, "Didn't Zona, Arizona, have a difficult time with Arizona State a couple nights back? Uh, they had a slow start. They ended up crushing the shit out of them. Uh, the final score of that game was, uh, let's see, they beat Arizona State ninety-one seventy-nine. So I guess twelve points isn't really beating the shit out of them, is it? But it was, it was a convincing win." Now we've got Auburn alumni on the horn. What's up, man? What's happening, JG? Uh, just uh, enjoying this uh, another triple double from uh, the tall guy. Oh man, what a freak! Like seriously, what a, what a luxury to have that guy roaming the middle of the paint every game, to where no matter what you do on the outside, there's a better than average chance that anyone going inside is going to get embarrassed by him. He's a mess, man. He's hard to deal with. And he's a fun guy to cheer and for, you know. Well, and not only that, but he, he, he definitely breaks the stigma of, quote, unquote, the goofy tall white guy in the middle because he's so good with his hands. He's so good with his feet. He's so smart. doesn't take stupid twice when they're not there. I mean, he's just, yeah. He's definitely a unicorn. And, you know, I, uh, the guy who wasn't posted, they, they apparently talked to his family member, but... I'm not expecting him back for another year, but at the same time, uh, I, I, you know, I said I'm not going to get my hopes up, but now I'm getting my hopes up that maybe, just maybe, there's a corner of hope and get him for another year. Because if he did, man, that, that, that would be uh, that would be swell. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Trey has that back. 
I, I'm having a little bit of a hard time hearing you. I know you're in the car and stuff. It's just you're kind of tinny. It's, I know. Oh, apologies, man. You yeah, good? Am I that bad? I mean, it's not really where you are. It's just the, yeah, you're fine. Um, thoughts? Oh, let's see. So they got Vanderbilt next. You think that's going to be a dub, right? Yeah. I mean, like we said last train, everybody left at home. Nobody really scares me. I mean, I, I would suspect that the majority of those games kind of being, being snoozers, quite honestly. But we definitely got tricky road games. Um, I don't know what, I mean, Florida's kind of, Mike White's got to be feeling some pressure games, well, I would think. But uh, Starball and Gainesville definitely look tricky. Knoxville, they, they, uh, Tennessee's playing better and better uh, as the years have gone. I know they play uh, with the Tuesday night, I think they play Kentucky, but that, that one's going to be a tough one in Starkville. So I, yeah. I, I'm still sad. I said last time I thought we finished 28 3. I thought I think we'll drop one of those road games, finish 16 and 2. That's what I'm thinking. But oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> no. Well, you know, I mean, if you, if, unless you're, you know, Unless you're losing your mind, if we lose that conference game, then yes, I'm expecting another one. Yeah. Yeah, man, I mean, it was a good game. Um, obviously, I'm still trying to um, compute exactly what the end game was for our uh, powers that be or Arsenal or whoever. Because this was absolutely the last thing I expected, as I'm sure you did. But, you know what this reminds me of, JG? This is what this reminds me of. Yeah. My senior year of high school. I dated a girl my senior year. Her parents got a divorce. Her parents got a divorce and proceeded to continue to live under the same roof with each other. And she, actually her mom, was like bringing guys home that she was dating with her ex-husband that she lived with. Oh. It's that level of awkwardness that I'm feeling that this is. Oh, that, because, that was, that's weird. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was supremely weird. But I'm... Whether you like Arson, don't like Arson, think Arson sucks, whatever. Just looking at it from a what's good for Auburn, future state, I don't understand how any person with any, you know, comprehension of this can sit here and not see this being an unattainable, unwinnable, no way out position of bringing him back for another year. I just don't see how. Yeah, it's a, it's a, Tough ask, I think. But he's going to try it. I mean, he ain't worried about it. But how are you going to be able to prove? That's one question I have. I mean, he was already having, you know, some people were like, obviously, that they, they didn't think it's a lot of effort. But now you've completely blown his kneecaps off. He's not going to be able to bring any top-level staff because no one's going to walk into the situation thinking he's got more than maybe a year contract. I mean, he's basically got a year to coach but he's rolling with the hot beat level of a coach like Gus in year eight. Mm. So, and then if, if by some miracle he does win, I mean, I have to believe that the man has probably a great deal of disdain for several folks at Auburn, where if he does have an opportunity to leave, he's going to go. So either he goes or we try to force him out, yeah. or some of the people do. So, I just don't understand, and, and the funniest part of all this, Jay, is, as, as you mentioned and, and several other folks, you've got one of the best senior group of high school talent in the state coming in next year, and you have a sparkling new football facility that we finished. So what does Auburn do when you've got those two things playing in your favor in state? You know, we, we, proceed, we proceed to uh, – to step all over our, our, our feet once again in, in public view. So You're it, very nice it, to it, say it, feet. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, if they only any little kids listening, I don't, you don't want to be talking about that. But uh, right, 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 right. it's peak Java, and it's absolutely something that's terrible and not winnable, and I don't understand what we're doing, but, hey, man, I'm not the one making the decision. I get so. it. All right, brother. Uh, I know you're out there traveling. Be, please be safe and uh, continue to just be the awesome stud that you are, bro. All right, bro. All right, Auburn alumni. Peace out, bro. We love you, man. All right. <laughs> That's it for Auburn alumni. <laughs> we lost him. I was just texting um, B Matt to see if we get him on. Uh, I'm backed up a little bit here. Uh, I got some super chats. I mentioned Mobile uh, alum had talked about the 
hold on, Mama, do I got to get through this or I'll get way too far behind, brother. You know I love you. Um, Mobile Lemon's pointing out that uh, we are going to have the show again. Six o'clock is when I'm going to, I'm aiming to start it up or get it going uh, next Saturday at the Voodoo location in Mobile. So definitely please, uh, if you guys are down that way, come hang out or whatever y'all want to do. You can eat, drink, bounce, doesn't matter. Uh, you know me, I'm the guy with the uh, colored hair. And J Head is a very, very thin person. Mobile alum's asking again what time, and I, it's six o'clock. Six p.m. Sat is the time. Uh, Fat Crack jumps in with another super chat. Says JJT when Madison gets its voodoo, and the crew definitely have to come on up. I, absolutely. Uh, as everybody here knows, I'm a big fan of Madison. Uh, Huntsville people are great too, but uh, I, I'm, I am uh, I lean toward Madison because uh, the Easter well. B. Easterwood is out that way, and uh, D. Lucky is out that way, and Real Deal is out that way, and so we we've got some real uh, we got some real legends out that way. It's a real epicenter of bunker greatness. Uh, <laughs> I think that's your bro, isn't it, Corey? Oh uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, so it's like is, is Corey here? I was like, yeah, yeah, I think so. Unless he's off in the corner listening to Ario Speedwagon again. Uh, Pocket Watch liked that analogy that Auburn alumni was dropping. Uh, about uh, you know his his girlfriend's parents getting divorced and her bringing guys home like <laughs> with the ex husband just living in the house, that would be really really awkward, would it not? Uh, <laughs> very very strange. Mamadou, uh, appreciate you, bro. I, I wasn't trying to blow you off. I just want to get through that. And also got another message from uh, Christy, as I as I said, uh, just got to kind of um, edit it. I guess she says I'm alive and trying to kick. Uh, I scared everyone pretty good. She said she got sepsis or sepsis, sepsis, sorry. She's getting better, but it'll be a minute before I am me. Well, that's great, man. I mean, I knew that I knew when she went home and we didn't have anything, we didn't hear anything from Christy because, you know, Christy's pretty talkative uh, that, that, that that concerned me. And it's I'm really happy to she I'm glad she's messaging. Whew, man, that is that's a big load off my shoulders. I mean, seriously, I've been thinking about that because you guys know how I feel about Gus, man. I, Gus is a uh, – he really is. I mean, I, I mean, if I'm doing my top 50 people I've ever met in my life, like he's definitely on that list. I really like Gus. I, but I understand the frustration you guys have with him as a football coach. I can see I, I can see between the two. I, I did think that he made some mistakes and he didn't adapt appropriately at Auburn, and I, and I think he deserved to get fired when he did. But that we can we can all agree that that's that stuff was true and agree that he's a good dude and his wife is an absolute legend. Um, so yeah, I just really did not want that family to be without their rudder, and they're not going to have to be. So that's great. This is good. Bob is apologizing. I don't know if he's being serious or not. I don't know what he's upset. I don't know what he would have to apologize for. I haven't been following closely enough. I've just been watching Weba and uh, Corey Dove talking it out here. <laughs> uh, Real Deal says he's actually Team Huntsville. When I was hanging out with uh, Mr. Mr. Real Deal and uh, Mrs. Real Deal uh, in Madison, I did not realize that they were uh, on enemy, ter- or enemy turf. <laughs> That's another one. I you know I make fun of a Hornacious for having a wife that he answers to. I, I'm I'm pretty sure that Real Deal's wife. I think he answers to her. Hell, I met her that day and I was answering to her. She's got a way of just kind of uh, just getting you to do what she wants you to do. I guess. Uh, Weba says, "Let's enjoy our basketball team." Hell yeah, man! Um, it's an easy team to appreciate, right? For sure, for sure. Uh, let's see. Ornacia says, name the other 49 people in your top 50, Jay. <laughs> you know, actually, I did make a list. I mean, I mean I'm not going to read it to you, but like about a month ago, I was like, I'm just going to, I'm actually going to make a list of my favorite people I've ever met. And I knew that I would miss some, you know, like, cause when you're just sitting there and you're thinking about the people that you interact with, like, you know, every day or every week or every month, but there's people out there that you, you really, really like that you don't necessarily see for whatever reason. I was watching uh, one of these videos. Larry King, who has passed away, but I didn't realize this. He used to do these things with like celebrities and others, where he would do like uh, he would just ask them questions about their life and stuff. Uh, not an interview; it was like quick, quick pace kind of. 
Like, you know, what's the best advice you ever got? What's the worst advice you ever got? What's the scaredest you've ever been? What's a hidden talent? He would do that kind of stuff. And uh, he was asking um, about great advice. He asked Justine Bateman about that. And she said something about how life, you just kind of assume that life is always just going to kind of go on this straight line. And it doesn't. It goes all over the place. And that is really good advice. I, I used to think life was like that, that you just build one block after the other and it just goes that way. You know what I mean? But life doesn't do that. Life goes everywhere. Hornace says, at least name 10 of your favorite peoples. <laughs> I will name them since you asked me. You don't know any of them. Courtney. Uh, well, J-Dub, he, he posts on here some. He's definitely one of them. JV, Crystal V, uh, Matt, my friend Macho Man, uh, my friend uh, Aaron Woodhead, uh, Maddie Crouch, uh, AC, and uh, Gen C. Some of my, that's my top 10. But uh, there's somebody I'm forgetting on there. I knew I was going to go back and add somebody. Someday I have to come up with my 10 favorite uh, bunks, though. I don't know if people would get upset about that, though. But if I was going to do top 10 bunks, I'd have to put uh, Hornacious on there. I really do like Hornacious. I make fun of him and shit, but he's he's a really good dude. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we hang out a lot, though. I think you're I think you're too high energy for me, bro. <laughs> it's like I feel like your brother's more my speed, you know? Uh, yeah, okay, Mama Dudat. I got you, brother. Now I got you. Mama Dudat calling in from greater Indiana. What's up, brother? JG, how you doing, brother? Boy, you sound a lot better than uh, Auburn alumni did. No, I, I, I saw I, I. It reminded me of the old uh, Nextel Direct Connect, the phone <laughs> that also could be a walkie-talkie. Damn right. Um, yes, yes. That, that uh, shout out, shout out to Auburn alumni, though. Uh, nonetheless, one of the one of the best callers in in, in brain drain lore. Right up there with uh, with D Lucky and Doc Dumpster. Well, you're, you're you're moving up the list, brother. There was a time when you just kind of popped on the scene and disappeared for a while, but you call every time now. And we love it. I appreciate it. No, my yeah, my my schedule has, has worked out where I've been available and and, and, and able to call in. Uh, so so no, I I've, I've enjoyed it. Um, but no, I thought you know it's interesting. So so I come at this. My father in law was a longtime high school basketball coach here in the state of Indiana. And is uh, to this day one of the smartest X's and O's folks that I know. Um, it's funny he he and Matt Tainer Matt Tainer text back and forth occasionally on X's and O's and um, and he was a brilliant guy. And uh, so I picked up a lot of his X's and O's knowledge along the way. And uh, you know I so I look at this and, and we were looking at the, the, the shooting percentages in the Ken Palm and, and some some tough stats right now and so in it you know I, I think it was a good gritty win anytime you don't play well offensively and you can uh still win that's a great thing um i am concerned though i think a lot of the especially three-point percentages recently have been be not because necessarily we don't have guys that are capable of making three-point shots um but the quality of three-point shots that i've seen auburn take in the last few games is not has not been great. Like forcing him um, a little bit, you mean? Yeah, for, forcing him. Uh, you know, some some deep ones off the dribble. Um, anytime uh, Devin takes a three, um, you know, there, there's a lot of there's you know there's just guys that you don't want shooting a large volume of three point shots. We have a few of those, and I just, and I think if if it were me, I would rather them take take less shots yeah. unless it's late in the clock unless it's late in the clock um there's there's guys on that on the floor that you don't want taking three-point jumpers um and then there's guys that you do want taking three-point shots but probably you want better looks work the ball around a little bit more um and, and get an open shot yeah because with walker on the floor and with jabari you know those guys need you uh they need a lot of defensive attention. If you work the ball around just a, if you're a little bit more patient, you'll get a lot of good open looks from three. And that's just not, that's just not coming to fruition often enough. I think Bruce sees that. And even in the video they posted before the Arkansas game, he, he said, you know, we need to value the, our possession and, and value the basketball. Yeah. And, and that is just not something that I'm seeing this Auburn team do consistently enough. They're going to get away with it against Texas A&M. They'll get away with it against Vandy. But I'm worried over the course of the tournament, 
there will be a game um, where if, even if you're a little bit sloppy and, or, you, you know, you you take some bad shots, your shooting percentage slips a little bit, um, you know, that's where upsets tend to happen. Yeah. And so um, I, I, I know the coaching staff knows that. I'm sure that that is going to be a point of emphasis. Um, so hopefully we can get that cleaned up before – uh, before March. Yeah. Need more shots from Lior. Still at 47% for the year, Mamadou. Just saying. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, there were, it, it, it pops up from time to time in really critical points. I mean, obviously the end of regulation against Arkansas was, was one of them um, with, with the shot that we decided to take there. Um, and, and so, so yeah, I think, I think they'll clean it up. Um, you know, this is an unselfish team. I think mo- for the most part, I don't think it's selfish players, um, but I think they're just making some dumb decisions at times that they will get it cleaned up. Yeah. I, I'm with you though. I, I, I they need, <clears throat> yeah, something's not quite right with their three point shooting. I mean, uh, Jabari's still pretty good at 40%. Ain't nothing wrong with that for a power forward, but no, you want no, the, but, no. you know, you've got, you're mentioning Devin. I mean, he's at 24% now. I don't really understand the Walker thing. Like he shoots more threes than I would expect. He's at 20%. Yeah. I mean, a 20% or 25% three-point shooter, you don't want that person shooting. Period. Right. Like, like I, if, if, I, if, if I were Bruce, I would tell Devin, unless there is two seconds or less in the shot clock and you have the basketball, you are not to shoot a three-point shot. <laughs> Just like, don't do it. Like, that, that, is, that is what I would say. But he won't uh, do that. Like, he, that's against his personality. He looks it at it as, like, it this is. organic thing that, like, you know, you can't – you can't give them rules. That's why, right, and that's why he doesn't call timeout with with you know 14 seconds left at the end of you know against Arkansas. All right, um, to you know that I again I I'm not going to criticize Bruce. He's 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 one of those you know the best college basketball coaches out there right now. But there are times where I wish he would do a little bit more of that. Yeah, I got you. I think that's fair. Um, Nobody's hating on BP guys before anybody gets mad. Ex- no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, and honestly, I think that's part of his charm as a recruiter too. Is guys guys like playing for yes. a coach that's going to let you work through some of those mistakes. Yeah. Um, so you know, I think it, you, you take the good with the bad there, but. Um, but yeah, but no, good, good game. And then yeah, just lastly, pivot. I, I echo basically everything Auburn alumni said um, about the about the football situation. Um, you know, I, I think it's funny because I, I I was I remember towards the end, and and I I think with you, like I think Gus is just one of the the best people that you can find in college sports. I have a lot of respect for who he is. And, and, and the time was up, right? But I think what was what was funny to me is like, you know, I think it, towards the end it was almost we were almost rooting for a narrative. I felt that would make Gus look bad, um, and we didn't really care if that trans- how that translated wins and losses wise. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I and I thought the, the difference here is Harson is just less likable. <laughs> Um, so uh, it's hard. It's hard. Like with Bruce is, or with Gus, it was sort of like, man, I'm just rooting for him personally so much, and I was happy to see him succeed. And obviously, more than anything, I want to see Auburn football succeed. Yeah, of course. So I still, I um, so I still want to see Auburn football succeed. Um, I just, I it is hard for me to imagine a path forward where the situation as it stands is is tenable. I think. All of the the concerns and issues at play are still there. Yeah, um, absolutely, and, and and there could be more, right? Like like this idea that all of a sudden, you know, I've seen this from multiple people now, where oh, this is going to galvanize the fan base to, to support Harson. Like, I, I just don't see it. I don't like, either. I hope I hope I hope Auburn football wins the national championship next year. I, I always like that's that's my hope every year. I, that's not changing. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to like not watch games or something. Um, but but like I I don't I just don't see how like man like I'm just so fired up that Brian Harson is my head football coach. Like I, I just I don't I don't understand how that. I mean if we keep, I 
and, and like this just i think everything is clear to me now too right like <laughs> when your dad calls in a fine bomb talking about how you know you know recruiting blue chip prospects is overrated um like that 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 just that tells me everything i need to know like the guy he is who he is yeah and credit to him for having the balls to say like screw you guys like fire me if you want but like i'm not backing down i i i admire that on a personal level but i think that that mindset is going to be his detriment as a recruiter i don't think he's going to learn any of the lessons that that he needs to learn to adapt and to 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 be a successful yeah, he's got to. football coach he's got at to. this level. I but I but but do you think he has it in him? No, but I think somebody like Zach or Trevon can be so good and 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 Cornell too that they can just kind of overcome it. The thing is you're always going to be fighting against Saban and Kirby on the recruiting trail and every recruit out there would rather hang out with them than any assistant. It, it it's always going to be the case. And so he's, if he's going to go head to head with those fuckers, yeah. he's got to do it too, and that's where it gets a little well, dicey. That, I think was it on the brain drain early in the week, or y'all were talking about how that's where that's where Tuberville went wrong, where he uh, he forget like the idea that all of a sudden the, the head coach had to start recruiting from well, out front. They didn't necessarily before, do before that at the time, he, but but I think but that was where he <sighs> in his career, right? Like he was so used to having the assistant coaches, you know, be the, the, the lead recruiters, right? And they're True. very successful at doing that. And then save and change the game. Now you have Kirby out there. Now you have, I mean, as much of an idiot and as much as I hate Brian Kelly, he's out front, right? Like true. kids weirdly love watching a white guy make an ass out of himself because it's like, it's like endearing to them. Like it's like this guy doesn't care. Yeah. You know, he'll do anything. I love he'll watching old guys make an ass out of themselves. I really enjoy it. <laughs> but like, but yeah, but, but, but again, like that, like that is the day and age that we're in now. Right. Yes. And if, if you cannot embrace that and go all in on that, like I th- he, Gus in his own way even did that. Right. Like, like, like he's, and, and awkward as hell sometimes, but I think in his own way he tried to adjust. Um, like I, um, I just don't see Harson doing that. I, I, I don't, I don't see him changing. I don't see him like I think you know you've alluded to, listening to the people around him who I think get it, and and perhaps have tried to push him in the direction he needs to go. Um, I, if he starts to listen, great. I just. It's really, really hard for me to see a path forward, and the fan base is not going to galvanize around you if you continue to be eighth in the in the standings in recruiting in the SEC. You're speaking a lot of truth there, brother. I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be this immediate galvanization. I, I'm with you on that. I'm very skeptical. But anyway, brother, you're always an awesome caller, and uh, we need to chew on this a little bit deeper, or more deeply, I should say. So. Um, Agree. Yeah. I'll, you know, I, I, I don't think the story's been written even, I mean, there's a lot that could happen before spring practice, right? With coaching hires, Good. retaining coaches that are currently on the staff. Right? Yes. Like, there's, we're like, we're not through this. Like, I think people think that this is like this is concluded and I don't think anything has changed other than like, we're not actively looking to find a new head coach. Everything <laughs> else is, is like that's the only thing that has immediately changed, and like the buyout is not measurably less at the end of next season. I know, I know. You're, like, not, you're like not saving that, a bunch of money. The part that seems very short sighted to me yeah. is it's like you kick the can down the road for a year. Like you don't you like you you're risking way more than you gain. Um, and I'm surprised they didn't arrive at that conclusion, but that's the job of part of it that we've come to know and love yeah all right brother i appreciate you appreciate it see you man mamadou's got some healthy i would call it healthy skepticism about that and and honestly i do too um yeah i do too this i mean you know three well whatever when we're transitioning from jet gate at the end of the 03 season to the 04 season there was a galvanization behind tommy but man that team was a little different right he had jason coming back you had Carnell coming back, Ronnie coming back, Carlos uh, Rogers coming back. 
I mean, you really kind of had this feeling that you get the right person, and they did in Al Borges, who incredibly was the right person. But uh, you get the right person, you put it all together, they can be great. I don't know that you look at this team and say, if they go out and get the right offensive coordinator, it's going to be fine. Because I don't think they can get the right offensive coordinator. I, I, I just they're they're going to give it a they're going to give it hell. But I, I just if you're a let's say, I know this is not going to happen. But let's say somebody like Jeff Levy, who's at Oklahoma now and he's doing the right thing. I mean, he's moving his way up. Why? I mean, under normal circumstances, right? If everything's stable and the team's fine, they can challenge for a guy like Jeff Levy. It's fucking Auburn. Like they've got money. They've got clout. They're on national television all the time. That's a national brand. Like, why wouldn't Auburn be able to get a person like Jeff Levy? Why couldn't they get a person like Kendall Bryles, one L in the first name? Uh, they should be able to challenge for anybody they want on the offensive coordinator situation. And you know they can't do it right now. They just can't do it, and it's not their fault. It's not Brian Harson's fault. It's not Brad Lerondo's fault. It's not anybody's fault. It's just a, a messed up situation. I mean, I've got a decent idea who they're looking at at an offensive coordinator. And, you know, here's the thing. Before people shit themselves over it and say, well, this guy hasn't done enough, Al Borges was the solution to the post uh, <laughs> Nalsminger experiment. I mean, he, this dude who was a nobody at Indiana came into Auburn and he made perfect sense out of the personnel they had and played a huge role in Auburn going undefeated in 2004. It, all it takes is Al Borges. You know what I mean? And he, you think about it now in the in the in the social media era, everybody would have blown their load over that and been so pissed off. Al Borges, this Rick Majerus looking dude from Indy freaking Anna, who cares? And he was the right guy. So I'm not. I'm not, I don't want to give too much hell about him. All right, seriously, I'm backed up here on the uh, on the on the chats and stuff. <laughs> I mean, I'm like 15 minutes behind, but we love to have a mama do that on. Uh, Love the Cat says, I'm drunk shooting a few basketballs in the hoop in my driveway right now. He's drunk at 3.05. It's not bad. I mean, it was a basketball day. Uh, Real Deal uh, mentioned before that he was feeding the baby and watching the drain. The last time I hung out with him and Mrs. Deal, the baby was in her belly. So that's good news that everything's moving along that way. Uh, <laughs> uh, Corey said that Jay and I used to hang out a lot. I've hung out with you once, Corey. So if you had made that comment like the night we hung out, then you'd say that, yeah. I mean, I, I you know how I like you, man. Let's do it. A lot of times when I go out, I gotta take my mom now, though. It's part of her. Uh, her doctor had asked that. <laughs> uh, and then Weebison was says, "Jay, why are you not hanging out with C Web? He's jacked and handsome. I'm not even arguing that. He's a very strong individual, and he's a uh, he's a handsome man, no doubt about it." Hornacious says, "I've only met JGT in person twice." He was weird AF and ran out on at least one tab. <laughs> How dare you say that? <laughs> it was two. I met you more than twice. I know that. Uh, Captain Nico Flygood was in the chat saying that he credited the win today to him wearing the replica 99 shorts he bought from the summer of 2000 at the Cliff Ellis basketball camp. Bah, you look pretty good out there. How you doing? Uh, you got a nice shot. Yeah. Uh, oh, Duff Diver jumped in earlier. Which of these stud ponies that BP is delivering can deep stroke from deep? Oh, man, that had a little bit of a... That went a little weird there, didn't it? Uh, let's see. that He's got two. Chance Westry. Um, I don't necessarily look at him that way. And then Trey, I, I, we'll just have to see what those guys are going to be. Because, like... This is going back a few years, but when Mustafa signed with Auburn, like he was known as a defensive stopper, which he was a really good defender. But he ended up being a really a pretty good three point shooter. He wasn't Bryce, but he was good. And I was always like, well, why didn't you guys mention that when he was being recruited that he was a thirty six percent, thirty eight percent three point shooter? So maybe Trey ends up being that guy. Maybe Chance ends up being that guy. But no, I don't think of them. Either one of them is like super duper sharpshooter guys. I mean, that's just me talking. I mean, I think they could benefit from having a Scotty Pullman myself, but, you know, whatever. Icope07 says, what up, JG? Icope, of course, uh, who hung out with us at the uh, in Montgomery back in the day. Was it uh, December now? 
Howard says Kessler needs to stay another year to work on his three-point shooting. If he improved his three-point shooting, he would be a top-five pick. Uh, I don't know about that, but he would definitely be a first-round pick. There's no doubt about it at that point. I mean, he doesn't have to be like a 40% shooter, but if he was like a 30% shooter, maybe. Right now he's at 20, and he's he's been better lately. So, And I, I'm telling you guys, in practice, he hits shots. I mean, he hits threes. So, I, I mean, I think a lot of them. If he came back next year, it would, it would be over. He's going to win Defensive Player of the Year this year. I don't really know where you go from there. Anonymous X says, Major Applewhite, question mark. He is certainly somebody that I think that they're going to be talking to on the offensive coordinator search, although I haven't gotten any, like, hard information about that. So, I hesitate uh, before getting too deep on that one. Um Frank G says, "Who is our Borges? Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know exactly yet. I mean, I've got, I know somebody they're looking at who's kind of like Borges in that he's old, well, older, and uh, kind of off the beaten path. I don't want to say who it is yet, but it's not somebody you guys would know by name. It's just you might know him from like where where he's been and stuff. But I mean, yeah, it was. It's going to be somebody like that. It's almost certainly going to be somebody like that. I, I just don't understand why Apple White would come here right now. I mean, if he did, that'd be awesome. But like South Alabama's coming along, and he's with a head coach in Kane Womack, who's like good. We all know he's good. He's going to take that next step. He's going to get South Alabama. They've already gone from terrible to like solid. He's got to take that next step and have them challenging to win that league, which will be you know beating the Raging Cajuns and uh, App State. Once they make that next step, he's going to get himself a job, and then Major Applewhite moves right up with him. So I don't know, man. It's it's a tough, it's a tough thing to just kind of figure out right there. Real deal says Harson is a dead man walking. Thanks for the super chat, sir. Uh, dead man walking. I don't know if he's a. I don't know if I would agree with that, bro. I think that he is an anchored man walking. I think he's got a piano on his back uh, that doesn't belong to him. Um, and as you guys saw in my column yesterday, I am generally sympathetic to him uh and some people would say that i'm wrong to do that but or that i went too far with that but this is silly the whole thing was really silly if you're going to start a coup to run brian harson and I, I let's make this straight this did not start with complaints and then they investigated it and that's how the shit went down that's not how it worked they didn't like him to start with and then the complaints came, and that was a catalyst, you know what I mean, to get it moving, to get it cranking. And that's how it all came about. So this was definitely a coup. I, I know that they're going to say it was just an investigation, but it, it was an attempted coup. I'm not saying Gouge was involved. I'm not saying Ron Burgess was involved. I'm just saying it was, a, it was an attempted coup from certain people, and it got quelled because they couldn't get out from the uh, – the bio. It's a money thing. But I don't... <laughs> All you got to do is watch Game of... Uh, not Game of Thrones. Um, that Netflix show where they're in Washington had Robin Wright in it. House of Cards. If you've watched House of Cards, you know you've got to have your votes before you try to put shit on the... You know, you got you to know you've got your peoples. you got your votes set up before you even vote got to know that so if you're going to coup you're going to try to get a coup to take out harson you got to know you can finish the job and they didn't finish the job and i think when the time came to pay the 18 million and get him gone because he can't i mean realistically guys I, I don't know if he can stay here i mean he can but i mean like we've talked about like mamadou was talking about and like auburn alumni was talking about as well it's he's foobar it's my opinion Stupup says, really wish AU had a true NBA style three and D wing. Mm, like a Danny Green. You know, there I mean before the injury, I would have told you that Al was that guy. His three point percentage went way up last year. His defense was terrific last year. Isaac Okoro, of course, not necessarily a three guy, but certainly a D guy. Not quite there right now. Although Stoop up today was a, a step forward, I think, for Al. He was the leading scorer. He, uh, they made some adjustments to the kinds of drives that he was making today, and I thought he made more sense out of them. Yeah, that was good. Blake R. says he's drinking the Four Roses single barrel today. Great choice, brother. That's delicious bourbon. If I had that in front of me, I you better believe I'd be drinking it. 
Real Deal says uh, the cards are stacked against him. He can get out of the hole, but the PR was damaging. You're damn right about that. Now, you're absolutely right about that. The cards are very much stacked against him, and uh, you have to almost wonder now if his organization has his back, right? I got questions about that. I, uh, you know, and and <laughs> I, I just think that, like, hmm, I don't know how to put this. Harson, I still I have reason to believe that Harson still doesn't understand how Auburn works. Now I don't. This was this was the last data I got on this was as this was going on. So I haven't not since it finished, which was just yesterday. But these folks that are close to um, Harson were like, well, Alan Green said this, and Alan Green this, and Alan Green that, and I keep thinking to myself, Alan Green, fuck Alan Green, like he's not your problem, and he's not your, he's not going to save you, he's not going to terminate you, and he's not going to save you. Like they're still in this mode of like, well, the athletic director is no, he's not, he's not. I you guys know how I feel about Alan Green. I always got to check myself because I find I end up standing for him unnecessarily or like unintentionally because I, I really like Alan. And I'm not trying to be like his stand. He doesn't need a stand. But I'm just saying, I think a lot of him, but you can't live in this world where it's like, well, Alan Green's running everything over there in the athletic department. Like, what is this, 1970? He's not. He's not. And people who think that he is are just out of date, and they're out of touch. And if that's the football coach, that may explain some shit. Rain 8689 is in the house. He says, we need more than our Al Borges. We need players. You're, you're right about that. The offensive line in 2004 anchored capably by Jeremy Engel from Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, yes, they had players. They had some really good offensive linemen. And I wonder if this team has some really good offensive linemen because if they are. They haven't. I don't know them yet. I mean, they have some solid guys, but they uh, good ones. I'm talking about good ones. And uh, they're going to need those as Rain. Uh, Rain's probably talking about several other people as well, in addition to the offensive line. But it's a complicated path out. And I was talking about this the other night. I think that the roster for 2022, Brian's mentioned this on the rundown, in fact, uh, the roster for 2022 is is solid. It's at least solid. They have some really good players on the roster right now. And as you guys know, I'm very high on Zach Calzada. Not everybody is. So I could be wrong. <clears throat> still got Wooden, still got Derek Hall, you know, you still got Owen coming back, still got Tank on the roster, still got Jarquez, who I thought was a, 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 a relevatory type young man last year. I think Zach Calzada is going to be good. You still got, you know, I think Lando King is way underrated. John Samuel's here. I mean, there's a lot of players, but 2023. They're going to have to pick it up, man. They're going to have to pick it up to get there because they ain't got them right now. Uh, let's see. Mama Dudat says, I would ask the coup attempters, what is going to change between now and December 22? Like, what is the difference between $18 million and $14 million? I want some answers on that. I have every reason to believe that if they had fired him, they were going to owe him more than eighteen. I know his I know his contract says eighteen, but I think he would have sued for more. I think he would have sued for more. And I think it's a good question, Mama, do that. It's a question I've thought myself. No shit. Uh, let's see. Fat Crack. Uh, drinking American honey today. Lightweight over here. <laughs> War Eagle 0008 says the Twittiots don't want to hear what Auburn alumni and Mama Dude Dad are saying, but it's the truth. We'll fire him in December. I mean, I'm not going to predict that. Listen, man, I... I mean, I know I don't know how old you are, War Eagle zero 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 eight. I imagine you're an older fella because I mean, not old, like just like my age. Um, whether you consider that old or not, but we've seen a lot of shit go down in 25 years on this beat, and I'm I don't I don't rule anything out anymore. So, do I think he's going to get fired? I don't necessarily think he will because I think they're going to be okay this year. I don't think they're going to be horrible. Um, Frank G says, "What would he have sued for?" Good question. So I'm just kind of yeah, and Stu Pup's wanting the uh wanting the rest on that. Let's just say, okay. So there was in Harson's statement yesterday, he had um poo pooed 
or, or come out against a lot of misinformation that's out there, right? Which is true. There was a lot of misinformation out there. And I don't even want to justify anything by talking about it, but I'm talking about it in the context of this is complete and total bullshit. The narrative about him and his assistant, okay, was 100% bullshit from the start, from the tip that was done. If he could prove that somebody had put that out there in an attempt to smear his reputation, something that was provably false, yes, Fat Crack is, 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 is following along here. If he could prove that, he could prove damages above the $18 million they would owe him on his contract. They, would, uh, they could owe him more. If he could prove it, it's a tough ask. It's a tough thing to prove. But if he had it, if he had proof that somebody was intentionally putting that out there and coordinating that to try to get that out there and make him look bad, he could get money for that. It's not really slander. It's more like defamation or libel, depending on the medium that it is. And I'm telling you, it was that was never anything that they charged charged him with. It was anything with his assistant. It was about uh just variances within his program. Behavioral things. Like not not just him being difficult to work with and stuff like that. It was stuff more like that. I'm just saying if he could have done that, they would have owed him more. If he could have proved that. I'm not saying he could have. I'm not saying that he had a, he had expressed an intention to do that. I'm just saying I know that there was a lot of misinformation out there. I know he was pissed about it. And so there you go. Fat Crack says he would have won way more than $18 million, way more, and that and the big money boys knew that. It, it had to have. Now, Frank's getting to the bottom of this. Is Do you think he could have traced that rumor to the source? I don't know. That is tough to do. That is a really tough thing to do. Um, but if he... All you've got to do is kind of threaten that. I mean, really, because Auburn, he's interfacing directly with, or his his attorney and him are interfacing directly with the Office of General Counsel. So, I mean, those people are risk assessors, and if he's like, I know this is bullshit, and I know where it came from, they've got to they've got to worry about it. You know what I mean? I don't know. Chip Chip says, someone tell Tim, probably talking about Tim Jackson, I guess, to use a VPN next time when posting libelous rumors from the AD offices. Nah, I, w- nah, I didn't come from the inside like that. I mean, I know you're kidding, but I know you're being facetious, and Tim, is a he's a foil for the bunker and always has been. And I haven't spent my whole life loving Tim Jackson, but I, I do. I like Tim now, and I have for a while, and I, I think he gets unfairly maligned. Just my opinion. He's <laughs> I, The funny thing about Tim is, like, seriously, I know you guys, not all of y'all, but, like, Chip and, I mean, there's a bunch of people, Scotty B, I've kicked it with before. Y- y'all would enjoy hanging out with Tim. He's funny, man. He's a funny guy. Just like Rich, man. Rich McGlynn gets shit on in the bunker, too. He's a great guy, and he's done great work. I never understand the whole Rich McGlynn thing. The Tim thing I get a little bit, because Tim can be a little off-putting, you know? But Rich isn't that way. Rich is a good dude. Like he's funny. He's he's real approachable, and he's done great work at Auburn. And I never understood why he's a bunker hate. Like the bunker hates him. I, I don't never understood it. You guys would absolutely love him. Anonymous says, "How did Mason get from vacation together to leaving the program? You know why? Because he want, he wanted to go to work for this guy, man. <laughs> Do I have it up here, guys? Can we can we get the sound can we get the sound files? Come after me." I'm a man. I'm 40. He wanted to play with them. Look at this. Mobile alum. I'm not going to get into any details, but Mobile alum. I'm listening to her on stuff like this. So this Harson could have done some serious damage just going through the discovery process in litigation. If she's not saying yes, she's not saying no. She's just saying that's just her, her opinion on things. And when it comes to this stuff, I listen to Mobile alum. Brian Matthews is in the chat now. I had talked to Brian like 30 minutes ago about coming on the show, and then I just got on a rant and forgot. <clears throat> I got a text from Corey saying he had to drop to go to his daughter's majorette competition. Well, you're good, Corey. Thank you, bro. And also, I didn't even mention, the surprise celebrity placard holder today was none other than Allie Davison. Our Allie Davison. 
our former intern and junior staffer, who uh, B Matt and I still keep up with. We're always cheering for uh, Allie. She's kind of like a de facto daughter for me and him. We love Allie. Very proud of her. She was. Uh, she did a great job. We got to get Brian on here, don't we? Do we got to get Brian on here? I know we. I was requested like forty five minutes ago, and I've just gotten. I've gotten away, just kind of running my mouth about, you know, uh, Harshin and 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 buyouts and. Can he stay and can he leave and all that kind of stuff? But I'm going to go ahead and leave Mobile alum statement up here. I think it's uh, yeah, I think that's a good one. Now's the time on sprockets when we dance. Fat crack, my man at Brian Brian Matthews. Welcome, sir. This is for you. We do we have a. Hey, do we have a Brian sound? Oh, we do have a Brian sound. Of course we do. I knew that. Where'd it go? Uh, yeah, like a, a medium um, banana pudding milkshake. You guys remember when we had Brian live on the show ordering a banana milkshake at the Sonic? It was unbelievable. Ravine says, let's hear from Wheezy. Yes. Let's get him on the horn. Let's get him on the horn. Brian frickin' Matthews. Oh, yeah. B Matt. Let's see. Let's try this one. There we go. <laughs> Cleveland Brown says that shake was delicious. <laughs> Did you enjoy it vicariously? Hello. Is it Brian Matthews? It is. God, Brian. The one and only. I don't know why you didn't call in before now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> What's been going on, bro? Are you are you actually at Starbucks? Uh, no, no. I picked up the Starbucks, and I'm back at the uh, Casa. Just chilling on the sofa. Did you say uh, Casa? Watching you on YouTube. Did you say Casa? Casa, was that? Uh, boy. Well, yeah, whatever. Casa. Uh, you know, my Spanish is a little, little, little off. Yeah, Spanish may not be your first language, right? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, thoughts on the basketball game today, Sir Brian? Well, if they hit their threes, they probably will probably win by thirty or forty, right? I think they were three for twenty-five, and heck, they had been up by twenty at the eight-minute mark or the twelve-minute mark of the first half. The way they were playing defense, I mean, you could tell A&M was getting a little frustrated because Auburn was playing so. So well defensively, um, so I, you know, I think that three point shoot is the biggest thing I work on. But I thought uh, Kessler was amazing. I think I looked at some point in the second half; it might have been around twelve, fourteen minutes left. He had, you know, something like four point six rebounds and seven or eight blocks. I was, I was like, yeah, probably not triple double today. And then boom, he just went off um, uh, that last half, the second half, and he was amazing. I thought uh, the bench was terrific. Jalen Williams, eleven rebounds. I thought. Um, Dylan Cardwell, um, if you look at him from game one to now, he's just a much, much better player. Uh, he's just more efficient, right? He's not turning the ball over like he was. I feel like he knows what he can and cannot do and is doing what he can do really well now. Um, who else played well off the bench today? I think those were the main two. I, well, Dev had some really nice nice plays. He got some rebounds and had those dunks. And maybe less three-point shooting from Devin, right? Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the whole team struggled, but yes, his, his form is just—I don't know what's happened. I mean, it, it, it was just a year or two ago that he scored like thirty something and made like seven or eight threes in the game, right? Didn't yeah. that happen at some point during his career? Yeah. 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 He used to be a thirty-four percent shooter, and then last year he was a twenty-nine percent shooter, and this year he's a twenty-four percent shooter. It's getting worse every year. That's crazy. Well, I mean, he has a weird shot. It kind of has a side spin on it. Yeah, and it looks it looks strange coming off his hand, too. I'll, um, I'll admit it. Hornacious uh, super chatted and said, does B-Matt have enough time away from his CPAP to talk? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I took a – I did like, a, you know, a high percentage, so I'm feeling really good now. Yeah, so yeah I, I don't know. To go for like, the one minutes. time that you called in and you had you were a little short on breath because you had just come down all those stairs or whatever, is they all yeah. still make fun of you for that. Hornacious is really obsessed with that, it sounds like. Yeah, well, I think he's obsessed Maybe with Maybe he you. likes dudes that breathe heavy, you know what I'm saying? Oh, are you saying he has experience with that? I don't know. I'm just saying. Mm. 
Um, do you have concerns? Like We've been talking a little bit on the show about uh, Auburn's lack, general lack of three-point shooting. I mean, Jabari's good, but the other guys are not as much. Do you think this is going to bite them uh, once we get to March? It could. That's the one thing this team is not doing very well right now, and I think that's a part of the, a part of your uh, a part of the uh, an offense that has to do well to be really good in March, right? To make those runs, I, ju- I just think you've got to. I mean, playing defense is big too. That's important. Uh, but you've got to um, be able to hit your threes. So I think this is six straight games they've shot over under three, thirty percent from three point range, and I don't think necessarily they're taking a bunch of bad shots. I, I just think they're just in an overall slump right now. Yeah. They need to, you know, find a way to pull it out. It's been going a while now. I was looking this up on Ken Palm. It's at least seven games they've been shitty from three point range. So I mean, it's 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 trending down. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It is. It is. So hopefully they can turn that around because. If they get that right and they keep playing defense the way they play, and you know Walker Kessler uh, keeps dominating inside, and, you know Jabari's been a little off the last couple of games, but they put all the pieces together they're capable of. They can be a really, really powerful team. I mean, I'm saying that as they're what 22 and two, but you know what I'm saying that a team that can run all the way to the Final Four, maybe do even more there. Uh, and then about how about Al? Al had I think a team high 16 points today. Uh, B Matt and really just looked pretty good, honestly. Yeah, it's first time he's really looked, you know, like he did a year ago. I wrote about him in my in my sidebar. I thought he was terrific. Um, you know, drove to the basket, finished, uh, had some, you know, good rebounds there. Not one turnover in 25 minutes. Uh, so, you know, led the team with 16 points. I just think he had a, a good overall game, and that's a confidence builder. I, I just think he needed one of those games to get him going. And uh, I, I think that's good for him. That's, an, that's another piece on this team that can be really good and, um, you know, you've got a guy like KD or Wendell who have made big plays down the stretch. Walker and Alan Flanagan is that type of player. He just needed to get his confidence up to get back there. So yeah, uh, that's another big, big addition to this team, so to speak. Um, one question on football. Is Brian Harson fucked or no? Well, um, first of all, Brian Harson was there. And he did not do the, um, you know, get my picture taken, get some video and, and dip out. Right? Yeah. He stayed for a while, which is a change, right? You wonder if there's going to be changes. Or not, and that was that was different than what we had seen before. Um, he 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 walked back and forth in front of the students, and you know, fist pumped them and, and took selfies with them. Then he walked to the other side of the floor uh, over there by the ESPN, and then uh, at halftime I saw him down right below where the media is. So he he made his way around the arena. I don't know how long he was there, but much much longer than he had done in the past. I thought that was good. And then is he done? <laughs> I mean, now it comes down to what happens over the next um, eight to ten months, right? You know, it's yeah. about h- how does he recruit and, and how does the team play? You know, I, I think that's what he's, he's going to have to be evaluated on now. Yeah, recruiting. Um, you know, I think he passed through the, through the um, you know, whatever was going on with the inquiry about the off-the-field stuff. So unless there's something else that happens, you know, um, I, I think this is all about just um, – you know how this team plays mostly this fall. We'll see. I don't. I don't have a really strong prediction on that yet. I'm a little concerned. We'll see who you know is on the team after spring practice and uh, who they can add to the team. And, and you know, uh, we'll see how it goes. Are you expecting further defections, sir? That I mean, yes, I think there's going to be. But the question is, are there, are there going to be important defections like key players? Uh, on offense and defense, and I think that's possible, but I don't want to go out right and just say it right because I just you know it's, I don't know that's going to happen or not. I, I, I don't you know I don't know what certain players. I think a lot of people know who I'm talking about, especially on offense. Oh, um, but you know I I can't make a, a, a fair prediction what he will do, um, but I, I think um, the spring and everything that goes on between now and then will be important, and I'm sure a lot of these players want to see some some progress in the transfer portal, although. It's not really a lot they can do right now. It's probably not going to happen. Uh, most of the incomings until after spring. War Eagle 0008 said, what could Harson possibly have to do during this two-hour window that would have been more important than being locked in on the basketball game? He needs to be as visible as possible. I think you would agree with that, Brian. Yeah, and, and he was. So that's good. Uh, that's a plus. And it's also a plus that he just didn't go to one spot and then leave. You know what I'm saying? He made his way around and hobnobbed a little bit. Not oh. just with the students, with other people too. Oh, oh look at so him! So that's important because I think when we talk about what a coach needs to do at Auburn to be extremely successful, he's got to be a coach, he's got to be a recruiter, 
and he's got to be able to develop relationships with the people that matter and just the Auburn fan base in general. And Bruce Pearl is, you know, a, 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 and all those, all those categories. And uh, that's something that Brian Harson needs to work on in my opinion. Yeah, he, he could do that. I mean, he, yeah, he could borrow a little bit from Tuberville, but he's a Senator now. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Tuberville did. I mean, we, we that were close to Tubbs and covered him knew that he was full of it for, for a lot of the time. But he knew how to play the game. He knew um, to know the right people and have those relationships. And it allowed him to maybe have a longer career and more successful career at Auburn than, than he probably would have if not for those uh, reasons, right? You know, he yeah. may have been uh, gone, uh, you know, in 2003 if he didn't have the right relationships. So, uh, Thoughts on the celebrity uh, N placard holder today? Brian Matthews. I, I'm just so I'm just so proud to be friends with Allie, you know, and uh, I've worked with her. Um, she is such a special young lady. What she did uh, for those students, you know, before the Kentucky game, Jungle City, to raise all that money and to um, buy all those things and get them distributed. That that took a lot of work, and she did it, you know, miles away in Atlanta, uh, and she just did it because you know she was the one that stepped up and you know uh, just took charge, so to speak, and. Uh, I was just so happy to see her out there, to see her get recognized. And I thought it was really cool. You know, she, they did the thing with her celebrity letter. And then she's coming up with four other students who were coming to her wanting to get selfies with her. I thought, man, that's awesome. Wow. Look, at that. Look at that star right there. You know what I'm saying? Do you think they knew who she that's was? Cool. Like, for reals? Well, they announced her as that, you know, as, you know, what she did for, for um, Jungle City and stuff. And I think there's enough students and people on social media who – have a good idea who she was. That's even awesome. They wouldn't have done that. Yeah, that's I think awesome. So. I love a five that. Five star alumni. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. And she's uh, for the. I mean, I know most of the people in the chat know, but Allie was here for a long time. I think three years, three plus years. Uh, yep. Most of that is an intern, and then uh, a little bit as a, like a junior staffer. And she, uh, me, and B Matt still keep up with her a good amount. And, and uh, we love Allie. I mean, she's like a. I, I described her earlier, Brian, as kind of like a, a an extra daughter for us. You know, I mean, we just kind of think of yeah. her that way and treat her that way. I did, I absolutely did. Yes, she's she's good people, and it's, it's awesome to see her getting her uh, getting some credit for being an awesome person. Yes. You know, yes, exactly. That's that couldn't could said it better. Yes. All right, bro. We appreciate you having you on, and uh, you know, you're an absolute legend, obviously. So, yeah. looking forward to the big football game tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually cheering for the Rams because I don't want to hear Stoltz running his mouth about how much he loves the Bengals that he doesn't really love. Oh, I was talking about Liverpool, but yeah, that there is a Super Bowl too. You're right. <laughs> oh, what a way to sign off! All right, bro. See you. <laughs> All right, peace out. <laughs> see you. Talk about Liverpool. What? Now? What are you talking about, man? <laughs> oh, Brian. <laughs> Cracks me up. Liverpool. Who cares, man? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you on the nerd thing. Uh, by the way, I want to welcome Mike G. Stoked to have him here in the chat. Uh, I gave him a little bit of a, a Limp Biscuit uh, lyric earlier. A uh, little bit of my nerd side. Uh, found out that I have some. I'm connected to some people that do a, uh, a live stream that they do out at LAX, where they just kind of shoot planes landing and. Uh, taking off at LAX. I know that sounds really banal, but I kind of enjoy it. So I was watching the show the other night and, uh, I just kind of, I like watching other streams to kind of get ideas for stuff that we can do or will do with our show. Mike G knows what I'm talking about. And so I was watching their stream and an Airbus, uh, 380 landed, uh, which is the largest jet like that that's in anyone's fleet. And I just, I took a screenshot it was the China Southern uh, Airline, which I didn't even know existed until I saw it, but that was an A380. I was so geeked out to see that plane actually landing at LAX. I cannot even imagine the equipment these fuckers have out there to to like film, to do live shots uh, from LAX at like sundown. I'm telling you, that stuff ain't cheap. Anyway, if you're into that kind of thing, LA Flights, you can check them out on YouTube. All they do is sit out there and watch planes land and take off, and they have the uh, like the, the the taxi radio frequency on, and um, they just kind of say like, "All right, the next flight coming in is flight twenty two seventy five on Frontier Airlines from Anchorage, Alaska. It's going to be a Boeing seven twenty seven. Had its first flight in May of nineteen ninety two. 
And I mean, it's it's crazy like that people care that much, but I love it. I kind of love it because we care that much about the shit that we talk about, right? Everybody's like, I don't know who Doctor Gouge is. Why are they talking about that? Because we like Doctor Gouge. Well, he's our ace horticulturist. He's our horticulturist, okay? And he hits the ground listening, and that's what's important. Also, a shout out to a Duff Diver. Uh, who sent me a picture here on my uh, chat machine showing that uh, he's got the brain drain up. Uh, looks like he's got that as a projector uh, at the house. What a legend. Yeah, that's great, man. Appreciate you, bro. <laughs> Do you play on that thing? Let's see. Blake says, my nerd hobby is weather. I follow all the big names, and I'm a weenie about it. I ain't going to lie. Did you see, Blake, did you see that uh, uh, Reynolds Wolf was on the stream? Uh, well, first of all, he was on our Twitter space that we did uh, and, and talked and all that kind of stuff. And then he came on the brain drain last time. He didn't call, but he was he was chatting on the brain drain. Uh, Reynolds Wolf from the Weather Channel does the morning shows. And uh, when they do like um, selected uh, like, like hurricanes, he's always there. And then like other selected uh, weather situations, he goes. He's an Auburn fan uh, for sure. And uh, he's from Jemison, Alabama. I, th- I think he's actually a graduate of Jacksonville state, but he grew up in an Auburn home and, um, yeah, he's, I met him at the, uh, 2010 game against, uh, Oregon. And, uh, I've just kind of been buddies with him ever since. I know Jay Lee likes him a lot too. They, they share a love for fishing. And, uh, so yeah. And also Julie Martin was someone that we were supposed to have on G pits and I kind of failed. I thought I had an opportunity there, a window, to get Julie Martin on the show. Um, So anyway. Look at this. Mobile Lumps is is Jim Cantori, uh, the web of the Weather Channel, your hero. Dude, Christina, everybody knows Christina Abernathy is the original Weather Channel OG. Come on now. We love Christina Abernathy. We miss her. Actually, she wasn't the OG, was she? uh, Jeanette Jones was the actual OG. And Cindy Pressler. We're talking, I mean, you're going back to the 80s. You know, your boy JG used to watch a lot of Weather Channel in the 80s. I'm just saying. Hornacia says, my nerd hobby is the drain. (laughs) 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 Mama Dudat says, Stoltzy already lamping on Twitter. Are you freaking kidding me? Mama Dudat, I'm going to have to look this up, bro. This is important to me. Let's see what this asshole's doing. I'm just kidding, you know. I get you guys know I love him. Look at this asshole! What a jerk! He actually made reference to this on uh, the rundown the other day that he had bought a uh, a squire. He bought a squire for some kind of a drawdown or you know whatever it is at one of his local bars or whatever. And so this is what Mama Dudat was talking about. He already posted this lamping about it. He says. <laughs> I got to move this so I can see it. Already won my 100 points back for tomorrow's big game for having blah, blah, blah. And I'm getting free food and drinks the entire game. Everything is coming up stultzy. Come on, Bengals. Who day? Sam H says Florida is on a 15 to 2 run. Of course, Florida is tangling with the, uh, the hated UK Wildcats today. Saw some footage from my friend uh, Kyle Tucker of uh, Oscar Shibway doing some soccer moves before the game, kicking a basketball with, like it was a soccer ball. Uh, love the love the cat says my favorite weather guy is Chet from Twist. <laughs> That's a Pershing missile, Chet. I know that. I didn't think it was a whale's dick, honey. <laughs> Chet, rest in peace, man. Uh, yeah, I actually like Twister. Thanks for bringing that up, man. I might watch that later. That was when Holly, what's her name? Not Holly Hunter, Holly something or other. She's pretty cute. I thought. Also had Phil Hoffman as uh, one of the weather chasers. Also the dude from um, Cameron from um, uh, Ferris Bueller, who is now on Succession. He was one of the weather chasers as well. Carrie Elwes. Was a was the bad guy in that movie? Some good folks on that one. I like that movie. It was a great like summer, mindless blockbuster. <laughs> but it actually reminded me of uh, Barton Fink when he says, "My name is Chet, and please remember, my name is Chet." 
It was, uh, I forget that guy's name. Helen Hunt, thank you. I said Holly, didn't I? What an idiot. Helen Hunt. Mobile alum says Twister uh, was a great movie. I enjoyed it. Uh, Universal Orlando used to have a really cool Twister ride. How in the hell did I miss that? How did I not know that? Or did I know that and I just forgot? I'm getting old, Mobile alum. You were about my age, so you know what I'm talking about. Helen Hunt. Thank you. D. Lucky jumps in to say Helen Hunt. Bill Paxton, the legend. It was Bill Paxton. That's exactly who it was. Who uh, came into my life uh, during Weird Science Days. Um, <laughs> Chet. You stewed, buttwad. <laughs> I've seen that one a time or two, bro. Hell yeah. D. Lucky is in the house. Uh, D. Lucky, of course, royalty around these spot, around these spots. I was... Uh, Wait a minute. Hornacious says Helen Hunt barely has an upper lip. What does that even mean, bro? Barely has an upper lip. I don't even know what that means. Oh. Well, I don't know. Is this, are we going to the girls who would poke part of the show, Hornacious? I don't know. I always thought she was pretty, but you guys may disagree. I don't know. I mean, she's like, you know, she's a little older than me, I guess. I, You know, Hornacious, I can't unsee it. I think you're right, bro. <laughs> Mobile Lum says, J.D. didn't care about the weather in the 80s. Just watched to know if I needed a raincoat when I hit the supper club. Good answer. I would have thought you would have said 90s, but that's cool. Whatever, you know. You know, whatever. It's all good. I was definitely a weather nerd in the 80s. There's no doubt about it. Hornacious says he would poke Helen Hunt. That's good. great. I'm sure she's fired up. Reynolds. Look, I was just talking about Reynolds. He says, how dare you? The only weather character you need is Reynolds Wolf. And Kelly Cass, who is, come on, you know, Kelly Cass is great. Tremendous. I was Reynolds. I actually was saying earlier who I thought the O the uh, the OG weather girl was though, and to me it was Jeanette Jones. But and Cindy Presser was at the Weather Channel. This is in like the mid eighties, mid or late eighties. Uh, who ended up going to WLKY in uh, Lexington, Kentucky? But Cindy Presser was. I remember when they got her at WLKY. I was like, oh shit, we got a girl from the Weather Channel. Like, Whoa! But Jeanette Jones to me was is the OG. I don't even know if Jim Cantori was around back then. He may have been. I was more worried about Jeanette Jones, though. There we go. Blake R., big weather guy, fired up. And I know I represented Reynolds correctly earlier when I said he's from Jemison, Alabama. He's a Jacksonville State alum, and he's a lifetime Auburn enthusiast. Let's see, Hornacious. Hold on. I, Hornacious, I don't know if I feel comfortable saying that one on the air, bro. There he says, Cantori and Janetta Jones is be are better. And Kelly Cass, of course, is co-host on the show. Uh, Janetta Jones, who sadly I think was in a car accident. This this wasn't last week. This is a long, long time ago. And I think it kind of I think she had a hard time getting through that one. Reynolds, I don't know if you were on the show earlier, but I had great news to share about Christy Malzahn. She's doing better. I got a couple messages from her earlier. She had sepsis, which I am told was very bad. However. She's good now. Or she's better. She's a lot better now. She's to the point where she's, you know, messaging people, and that's great because we love Christy Malzahn, and I know you like her too. Uh, Clint S., great question. This is a guy who definitely was there to know this. He says, wasn't she always knocked up? Yes, she was. She was constantly pregnant, it seemed like. I was going to say an inappropriate comment there, but I'm not going to. I mean, it is 346 on a, on a Saturday. I mean, I don't need to be getting, you know, we're, it's not midnight or 1 o'clock in the Eastern time zone here. I don't understand what Auburn Dad for Life says. Reynolds, have you caught last AU wishbone? I mean, guys were on it. I mean, guys were on it. Sharon Resultin, great call right there, bro. Although I don't necessarily know what you're trying to say there. <laughs> I would have liked to have just Sharon Resultin. Thank you for reminding me of that. Sharon Resultin, also one of the OGs. Absolutely. Auburn Dad for Life says much love for Miss Christie. Yes, we are very fired up about this. Because um, we haven't heard anything from Christie uh, in like six weeks, and it was very concerning to me. 
but we have heard from her now twice today, and we're that's just this is really good news. Uh, I know she went home about a week ago, and I know she's. I mean, it, it, it isn't all butterflies and rainbows for her yet, but um, it's all good. It's all good. Um, what else we got to talk about? We've talked a bunch about a football. <laughs> no, no, no. Canoe man since 1 a.m. I can't do that. I got to go to dinner with my mom at 5. Uh, and I got to get over there first. And uh, I've already had a few. And she likes to get real accusatory. Like if if, uh, if I come in and I'm a little bit drunk, you know, because sometimes we'll do these shows and I'll go say hi to my mom. And she's like, have you been drinking? I'm like, no, mom. I promise I haven't been. I have been. These people on your uh your email list. She thinks it's a big email list that I work for. They just do. Crystal's in the house. Crystal, of of course, one of our most steadfast football fans who stops by from basketball from time to time. We love having her. She says, thank the gods they won. Always time to beat Aggies. It's always time, right? It'd be better if it was Jimbo. But it's all good. Let's see. Blake says, Hornacious, my most pokeable weather chick is the Telemundo girl. That is a comment that would have worked in the 80s, 90s, or the 2000s, uh, for what it's worth, uh, if you're asking me my opinion. You're not, but if you did, I would tell you that right now. Uh, let's see. Auburn for Life says, meant that Van and John, the host, were going off on Jabba. Uh, Van Allen, Plexico, of course, uh, who I know only through Twitter, but uh, I like him a lot on Twitter. Uh, anybody on Twitter who is not toxic and doesn't talk a bunch of mad shit at people, I really like on Twitter. Uh, so Van Allen, Plexico certainly fit, uh, fits the bill on that. And if I was going to listen to another podcast, it would probably be theirs. Although I do not listen to one. If if Reynolds Wolf did a podcast with Sharon Resultant or Jeanette Jones, I would listen to that. Or Christina Abernathy. I would, or, or Jen Cafarno. I would do that too. Whatever. Whatever it took. And I was telling Courtney the other day, I wish I had a voice like Reynolds. He's just, he's the best. <sighs> Imagine if Reynolds had somehow in his life, if things had gone awry, and he ended up being a... Uh, a streamer, a part-time streamer such as me. How great he would be. So much more handsome than me. A better voice. But you know what? I'm just going to fight through with what I got. God made me cross-eyed. God made me portly. And I'm just here doing my thing, you know. Uh, AU Taxman says, no Kristen Dodd. Do I know Kristen Dodd? I probably do. I'm going to go ahead and Google that. Uh... I don't think I know Kristen Dodd. First thing that comes up is a uh, Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, which I'm not opposed to, uh, but no, I don't remember her as somebody that I would be paying attention to. Uh, my man, uh, Mike G says wrote Wolf Reynolds. <laughs> Let's see, Blake says, I would love to see Reynolds host a Twitter space so I could really geek out. I bet there's a situation where Reynolds would be the perfect person to host a Twitter space. I, I mean, it'd be some like, I, I don't mean, he could speak very, very intelligently on Auburn football as we have seen, but uh, I wonder if he could, he could also do like a weather thing. Like if some major weather thing occurred, he could also do one on fishing, I think. Hey, brother. Pocket watch this, but can Reynolds wolf through Jay Jacobs' voice? I bet he could. Hey, brother. Listen, I was talking the other day. I was talking to uh, Scotty, and JG. He said that uh, he said that he remembered working with you back in about '98, and uh, he was just praying for you, brother. Thanks, Jay. I'm 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 Catholic, so you guys pray to Mary. No, no, we just ask for her intercession because we think she's pretty awesome. Uh, my man. Let's see. Uh. Mike G says he talked a lot in the Twitter space the other night. Oh, my gosh. That sounds like a, an incredible Twitter space to have him on. Uh, Brian, thank you for jumping in. Brian says God gave you frosted tips, too. Actually, Emily gave me frosted tips, but he made Emily, and therefore, in your, you're right, he did. That's about all I've got going for me. My wife, my daughter, my hair, and uh, 
My eyes, I can still see as long as I have my glasses on. This is good. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Auburn Dad for Life says, sorry, listening uh, listens to other Auburn pods, but love yours the most, JG. Much love to the Commodore. Hey, man. No, I get it, man. I get it. I get it. I get it. No, I don't, no offense taken at all. I promise. I promise. There's, there's good podcasts out there. I don't. I listened to the AU Wishbone guys when I first got started. This would have been about like, because uh, they, they started before us. Um, shoot, I, don't, I think there were two going at the time because I mean, this is when Hokinson was working with me, working for me. And he said, bro, we got to have a show. And I was like the old guy that resisted, like, I don't want to do a show. And then Hoke was like, no, nah, you really got to do it. And so we did it. And uh, I had to listen to uh, AU Wishbone to kind of understand the concept, really. And uh, Plexico is good people. There's no doubt about it. Oh, yeah. A Mobile alum says, hey, hey, War Report, I'm one of your subscribers and loved your podcast last night. That's what I like to hear. Mike Mike G in the house, who uh, collaborates there at the uh, War Report with uh, Ike and uh, Caesar and uh, Will, B. Will. We're sure uh, guys do great work over there. Uh, love the tone of the shit that they do. That's that's the thing I love about them is that it's not this hateful, negative, accusing people of crazy stuff and, 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 and trying to shoot down people that have different ideas. It's 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 friendly. It's nice. I like that. I really, really like that. And I feel like those guys need uh need all the support they can get. They deserve more than they ever get because they they hustle like nobody's business. And I love the positivity, man. Uh, let's see. Mr. Matzer says, Nita G pits to hear you tell Neil about what has been going on, 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 on. Yeah, I do. Uh, I had to skip on him a couple times this past week. He was trying to any, anybody out there who's a G pits listener and you're like, geez, Jay, why isn't there a show? It's all me. Neil's been great. Neil's been trying to do it. I've just been having to been like, I don't know. I think they're going to fire him today, man. I don't know. I think they're going to keep him today, man. Like, it was like that over and over again. Actually, uh, uh, administrative assistant mentioned this morning that we ought to do a show, she and I, uh, in lieu of G Pits because she knew that I had skipped out a couple times this week. So we may tape a show tomorrow, uh, me and wifey. In fact, we probably will because the fact that she brought it up, don't start hornacious. The fact that she brought it up probably means it will actually occur. So uh, we'll talk to her about some stuff. Um, we haven't done a show together. It, I, I hate telling Neil that because it's not very nice, but the, the most downloaded show we ever had at G-Pits by far was the show that Courtney and I did debriefing uh, our trip to Punta Cana last time. I think a lot of people found some uh, some value in that, some 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 hilarity in that. Uh, as you guys know, I mean, my relationship with Courtney is a little odd. We do, uh, we like hanging out a lot, and we've been together a really long time, but uh, she's a different person than I am for sure, and, you know, that's all part of it. Uh, Reynolds says we need a show that provides dating and or dating advice in Harson's voice. Yeah, <laughs> that, you, exactly what you said. Problem is we haven't heard his voice enough to emulate it. This is true. I don't know that I could do that. I, I don't even know if I could try it because I just haven't heard him enough. But there's no doubt. Talking about the War Report, Auburn Dad for Life says they are level-headed guys with great content. Please, everyone, check out anything by the War Report and anything JG's on. <laughs> uh, Mr. Matzer says that was teased at the end of 2021. It didn't happen. All right, I'll tell you what. We're, we're going to go all in, and I will give you personally a shout-out, Mr. Matzer. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but we could, I still think we have some stuff to talk about from the reunion, which uh, talk Mr. Matzer. Seven. Uh, I think there's still some stuff from the reunion that we could talk about um, that would be interesting because my wife kind of came into that situation without having any idea what she was getting into. Uh, me and I had 63 people in my high school class and we had a reunion and we had about, I don't know, 40 people there, uh, two thirds of the class. And um, and it went it went better than expected. I had a great time. Um, and then what happened was it was kind of weird because my guy friends, uh, the guys that I hung out with really weren't there. I mean, there were a couple, there were probably, if I think about it now, about seven guys I hung out with a bunch in high school. There were two of them there. Well, really one and a half. And, uh, so it was a lot of girls I hung out with and my wife took it really well. None of whom that I had dated by the way, but it was just girls that I had known. 
Uh, and my wife, of course, always has a very interesting take on things. But anything that's wrong with G-Pits and we haven't had enough shows, it's on me. Don't blame Neil. Terrence says, dating advice number one, don't look like me. <laughs> Terrence, I know you're doing well out there, bro. You're just lying. You lying, you lying, you lying. All right, we're probably going to wrap it up there, guys. Seriously. I mean, we love you guys. We've been talk- we have we talked about basketball. We talked about football. Uh, I gave you my whole rant about what I think happened with football and you know what, what's going to happen in the future. We don't know yet. Um, it's kind of a mess. And I think, the st- the, as Real Deal said, I think the cards are stacked against Brian Harson. Um, and I don't think it's really that fair to him. But, you know, life ain't fair. So he's either going to fight through this thing and come out better on the other side, a la the Shawshank Redemption, or he's not, and then he gets fired and he makes a lot of money either way. I mean, those are really the choices. So, yeah, that's pretty much where we are. Uh, next show will be, uh, since Auburn is so damn good this year, we're going to continue doing shows, even the late ones. So if you guys want to stick around a little bit after the Vanderbilt game, it probably won't be until 1045 or 11 o'clock uh, Central midnight uh eastern so i know it kind of limits things but we still feel like we need to do that auburn's still having an incredible season and as we get into march madness you know we go to tampa for the sec tournament uh and then we move along in the ncaa tournament we're going to be doing shows then and who knows when those times are going to be and i got to get used to doing shit you know i mean like quickly after games and stuff and i appreciate you guys you guys keep me young and I'm already working on my laptop, getting it to the point where we can do shows from my laptop. I mean, here in my studio, it's real easy. But when we're in uh, wherever we end up being in Greensboro or in Chicago or stuff, I'm gonna have to do it in like the corner of where the fuck ever. And I gotta have the uh, everything to do. I gotta have the equipment to do that correctly. And we're there. We're gonna get there. And we're gonna get there because of the awesome super chatters and support we have at AuburnSports.com and also the Brain Drain. So. There it is. We'll be back uh, Wednesday night after the Vanderbilt game. And we'll do be doing a rundown as scheduled on Tuesday. So you guys will find that on your favorite podcasting uh, whatever app, channel, vertical. Uh, you can also find that at AuburnSports.com. We appreciate you guys very much for watching the show, for following us at AuburnSports.com. Of course, I'm the Commodore there, as it says right there. And if you guys are looking for a great site to talk about Auburn and to read about Auburn, I couldn't more heartily endorse auburnsports.com a place i've spent the last 10 years uh and brian has been there even longer than that both as a poster and as a uh, employee as well so guys appreciate you guys love you guys let's make great decisions tonight if you get if you're drinking make sure you stay hydrated continue drinking the water if you know i've had my uh, river region whiskey club uh cup here i've been drinking the water as i moved along and I could not more heartily recommend a liquid IV at night. Uh, they don't pay me anything. But if it's nighttime, you're not sure that you drank enough water to offset the brown water or the beer that you have had, go ahead, try that liquid IV. I can almost guarantee you, even if you're going to feel it a little bit in the morning, it'll be a way better than it would have been without it. Uh, Blake says, I will be traveling for my work for a couple of weeks. It so won't be able to drain much, but I will try and stop in and say hey and drop my super chat. War damn eagle, JGTR. Blake, man, we're here for you, bro. We'll keep it going. And, again, we're going to do this all the way through uh, the Final Four because, I mean, Auburn, Auburn's obviously going to make it to New Orleans for the Final Four. So uh, we'll be doing that the whole way. We've got plenty of time. All right, guys, enjoy the team. Make great decisions out there. I'll see you guys, uh, I guess, virtually on the podcast Tuesday and, again, here uh, on the Brain Drain Wednesday night. Till then, keep your feet on the ground. Keep reaching for the stars. Love you guys. Peace.